Council, will the meeting please come to order? Welcome to the Metropolitan Council. Uh, today is Tuesday, June 4th, 2019. Will all members of the Council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Invocation this evening will be offered by Council Member at Large, Sharon Hurt. Let us bow. Dear God, how excellent is your name. I lift up our elected officials. During this time of difficult and serious decision making, I pray that you put a spirit of civility and reconciliation into the hearts of those called to lead our city. Give them discernment, humility, empathy, and willingness to put the common good above politics and service before self. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, <laughs> You may be seated. Next time I'll remember to turn off uh, Council Member Hurt's microphone after the prayer. <clears throat> so without objection, we will suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Uh, is there a motion for the adoption of the minutes of the meeting of May 21st, 2019? I heard a motion and a second. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? No, Mr. Vice Mayor, there are no messages from the mayor. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> uh, just a couple of things uh, before we move on. Um, so um, since we last met, um, there was the tragic shooting in Virginia Beach. Um, so our thoughts and prayers um, go out to the people of that city. Uh, it's happening far too often we keep um, doing this. Um, but um, please remember that city and the people of that city uh, in your hearts. Um, I'd like to remind people that uh, D-Day, um, the 75th anniversary of D-Day, is um, this coming uh, Thursday, uh, June the 6th. And um, we uh, owe so many people um, or, or thanks um, for that day. Um, on a positive note, the Vanderbilt baseball team is headed to the Super Regional. So we're gonna keep an eye on them. And I was reminded that the CMA Fest uh, starts, I think, tomorrow. So um, uh, remember that as well. Um, all right, so um, committee reports on matters other than legislation. Any committee reports? All right, seeing none, tonight we have uh, one presentation. I'm gonna call on Councilman Larry Hager. I want y'all to meet Brian Snelly and his mother and father, Shane and Jeff Snelly. And you might have seen it in the newspaper a while back. Brian lived down the street from me, and he went to school with Austin Hager, my oldest son. They went together to Genesis. And Brian, of course, I should be giving a proclamation to the parents. They have persevered, and with the stamina and dedication that they had to Brian, Brian got through Genesis, and then he went to Trevecca University and he graduated after 12 years from Trevecca University. Right, Brian? And I want to read you a proclamation. <laughs> this is a proclamation recognizing Brian Snelly, whereas walking across the stage to receive a diploma is an achievement for every graduate. For Brian Snelly, it's even more so. Brian, who is on the autism spectrum, began working toward his bachelor's degree in sport management in 2007 at Trevecca University. Whereas for the past 12 years, Brian registered for five to six hours per semester, diligently pressing toward his goal and often accompanied to class by one of his parents. 
whereas Brian's perseverance inspired faculty members in the Department of Exercise and Sports Science to establish an annual, annual award in his honor, Brian was the first recipient of that award and whereas Brian leaving Trevecca before he finished his degree was never an option, though it wasn't always easy. Whereas on May the 4th, 2019, Brian Snelly and his parents, Jeff and Jane Snelly, celebrated Brian's achievement at Trevecca's commencement convocation and whereas Brian and his family already planning his next steps after graduation. Whereas Brian likes animals and volunteers sometimes for the Metro Animal Control Center, he's helped with special needs baseball and basketball leagues for several years as a volunteer. And now therefore I, Larry Hager, council member of District 11 of the Metropolitan Government Nashville and Davidson County, do hereby recognize and applaud and congratulate Brian Snelly for their compliments and determination of obtaining his Bachelor of Science degree and extend my most sincere gratitude for his volunteer work to the city and wish him continued success in his future endeavors. Signed by me on May the 22nd, 2019. Brian, we're gonna present this to you. You wanna say anything, buddy? You wanna say anything? You wanna say anything? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, I just want to say we have the most awesome council representative and just thank you Larry and um, just an honor to to be your neighbor and your friend but thank you for all that you do for us thank you Thank you, Council Member Hager. All right, so we are now ready to move on to elections and confirmations. I'm gonna to go to Council Member Lee for a report from the Rules Committee. Yes, sir. Uh, we have, for the, excuse me, I didn't turn my page before I stood up. For the beer port, uh, Beer Permit Board, we have seven to zero approved Mr. Conway. For the Human Relations Commission, we have seven to zero approved Mr. Davis and Mr. Mann. For the um, appointment, Ms. Paula Montanez, Martinez was deferred for two meetings until the second meeting in uh, July. And the appointment of Mr. Um, Vernick was approved seven to zero. For the Sports Authority, um, Ms. Anna Pray, uh, Page was approved seven to zero. For parking, the Parking Commission, um, Mr. Brown and Mr. Green were approved seven to zero. For the Zones Appeal, uh, Mr. Lawless at the last meeting, it was deferred for two meetings, so it was still deferred. For the Cheatham County Rail Authority, the appointment of Mr. Edwin Edward Cole was deferred for one meeting. And for the election, the Nashville and Eastern Rail Authority, Mr. Jeff Syracuse was approved seven to zero, sir. I'd like to move these appointments and deferrals. All right, so I got a motion on all of the appointments and reappointments, including the election for uh, Council Member Jeff Syracuse for the National and Eastern Rail Authority. I got a motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those no. You adopt. So, um, I was concerned about that last one with Mr. Syracuse, but I think we're good. Um, so if you would um, stand as I call your name um, for the uh, Beer Permit Board, Mr. William Conway. For the Human Relations uh, Commission, Mr. Jeremy Davis. Uh, Ms. Alethea Mann. And Mr. Erwin Venick. 
For the Sports Authority, Ms. Anna Page, former council member, Ms. Anna Page. Traffic and Parking Com Commission, Mr. Feller Brown, also a former council member. Uh, Mr. John Green. And uh, last but not least, Nashville and Eastern Rail Authority, Council Member Jeff Syracuse, if you'll stand up. So on behalf of the entire Metro Council, we thank you for your willingness to serve and to volunteer your time and expertise. Thank you. All right, if you're following along on the agenda, um, our next um, order of business is electing um, a member of the council to serve on the Urban Council. Um, so I'm taking nominations. Council Member Allen, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to nominate Freddie O'Connell. All right, uh, Council Member O'Connell is nominated. Uh, council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to uh, nominate Councilwoman Nancy Van Rees. Okay. All right. Any other nominations? So we have two people nominated, Councilmember O'Connell and Councilmember Van Rees. Um, I remember, again, this is um, a very important assignment. This uh, involves after the, um, the budget is passed, uh, signing off on uh, the tax rate. Um, do we have the ability to put the names up on the board? All right. All right. Um, so, um, Council Member Allen, do you have any other comments? Your name is still recognized here. No. Okay. Uh, Council Member Hurd, anything else? Um, your name is still up. Do you have any comments? All right. Uh, Council Member Vircher, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to nominate um, Councilwoman Porterfield. Okay, now we have three. Okay. Councilmember Porterfield. Okay. All right, any other nominations? Oh, Councilmember O'Connell. We appear to have some <clears throat> well qualified candidates. Is it possible for me to withdraw my name from nomination? Uh, it's always possible for you to do that. All right. So Councilmember O'Connell was withdrawn. Now we're down to uh, Councilmember Van Rees and Councilmember Porterfield. All right. Yeah. So Councilmember Porterfield, we're just making sure that a portion of your district is in the Urban Services District. Do you know for sure? Yes. Okay. All right. So. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, do we have the ability to put both their names up on the board? Okay. All right. So um, this is um, for the uh, very important job of signing your name. So um, we have got uh, two people nominated, Council Member Van Rees and Council Member Porterfield. Uh, with no further discussion, uh, Madam Clerk, I'm going to ask you, are we ready to go? All right. Uh, I'm going to ask you to... Um, Open up the board, and if you will vote for one of these members. Thank you. Anything showing up yet?
Everybody voted who wants to vote? Um, not agenda, uh, not Internet Explorer. Yeah. Madam Clerk, we're ready? I don't know, but. We don't know. This is me, but you tell me. This may be a very long evening. Um, the board is clear. Okay, so um, we're going to try to fix it. So I believe that everybody's votes are in. Madam Clerk, if you will close the machines and take the vote. Councilmember Van Reese received 20 votes. Councilmember Porterfield received 17 votes. Councilmember Van Reese, congratulations. You are now a member of the Urban Council. <laughs> and Councilmember Porterfield, don't take it too seriously or too harsh. All right, okay. All right. So one of the things before we get to bills on public hearing, um, <clears throat> there are uh, four names that have qualified for the position of Metropolitan Trustee. Uh, the vote will be at the June 18th meeting. Uh, the four people that have qualified are uh, Jacoby Adal, Erica Gilmore, Parker Toller, and Taneka Vircher. So again, we will be voting on um, that spot for the Metropolitan Trustee on, um, at the Tuesday, June 18th meeting. All right. <coughs> All right, we are now ready to move on to bills on public hearing. Uh, there are two bills up tonight. Um, so let me explain how this is gonna work. Um, I will call up the bills uh, one at a time and then refer to the sponsor. Uh, the sponsor will then uh, open the public hearing. I will ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the bill and then I'll ask for a show of hands for those who are in opposition to the bill. If anyone in favor wishes to speak, I will ask you to come forward, introduce yourself, give us your address, and then you'll have three minutes in which to speak. Uh, I will then do the same thing for anybody opposed to the measure. Uh, after that process, I'll close the public hearing and refer back to the sponsor. So again, let me repeat, I'm gonna ask for a show of hands of those people who are in favor of the measure, those people who are opposed, and then if you will line up uh, when it's your turn, if you're in favor of the measure or opposed, if you'll go ahead and line up, and then again, please come to the podium, uh, introduce yourself, your address, and then you will have three minutes to speak. Um, I don't like to use the gavel, but if you uh, go, we usually let you finish your sentence after three minutes and then I'll bang the gavel. Um, I don't like to do that, but just be courteous to everybody else who are trying to speak within the three minute guidelines. <clears throat> the other thing I will tell you is that um, at the last meeting or several meetings we've had people applaud the speakers. That just delays um, the proceedings. Um, I know that you are here in support of each other in many ways. Um, we understand that, but if you will not applaud, that helps us get along with the presentations. If you do applaud, I will bang the gavel and ask you not to do it, okay? All right. <clears throat> So um, we actually, again, we have two bills up, BL 2019-1624 by Council Member Vircher and BL 2019-1654 by Council Member Vircher and Roten. What I would like to do is switch those bills and actually take up the second one first. The second one is the Capital Improvements Budget, uh, affectionately known as the CIB. That is not the budget, that's not the operations budget. The CIB, the Capital Improvements Budget, is simply the wish list of items that council members and the mayor's office put in a, basically a, um, you know, for better words, a notebook of projects that we would at some point like to see done. They're not actually um, on the list of things to be done, but the capital spending plan picks items off of that list to actually get done. So. That's the capital improvements budget. Again, it's the wish list of items, whether it's buildings, whether it's community centers, whether it's sidewalks, road projects, things like that. That is what BL 2018, 2019, excuse me, 2019-1654 is. Uh, without objection, I'm gonna take that one up first, and then the second bill will be the bill on the budget, okay? So um, without objection, we're gonna go to Council Member Vircher. Uh, we're gonna be on BL 2019-1654, it's a bill by Vircher and Roten. 
uh, ordinance adopting the 2019, 2020 through 2024, 2025 capital improvements budget for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County as the official capital improvements budget of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County for fiscal year 2019 through 2020. Council Member Vercher, you are recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Do you want me to open the public hearing, then come back for committee reports? Why don't, and then you, why don't you go ahead for the committee reports, and okay. then, um, yeah, that'll be fine. All right, thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, Council Member uh, Bedney, you're recognized for planning and zoning. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, the committee reviewed, approved the uh, legislation, and voted to re refer uh, 1140 against. And right. Vice Mayor, Budget and Finance recommended approval with a re-referral to Budget and Finance, 940 against, and I'd like to open the public hearing. All right, I'm gonna declare the public hearing open. Again, we're on BL 2019-1654, the Capital Improvements Budget. Can I see a show of hands of those who are here in favor of the Capital Improvements Budget? All right, I'm looking around, I see none. Those who are here in opposition to the capital improvements budget. Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Vercher, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval with the re-referral back to budget and finance. All right, so I've got a motion to approve, uh, properly seconded. It's gonna be re-referred back to budget and finance and I believe planning and zoning. Planning, okay? zoning, and historical, correct. Okay. So I've got a motion and a second. Any discussion on 2019-1654 uh, um, on um, public hearing? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt, all right. So now we're back, um, now we go back to BL 2019-1624, which is the budget ordinance. Um, this is the budget ordinance of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, Tennessee for fiscal year 2020. Uh, BL 2019-1624, Council Member Vercher, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and Finance recommended approval with a re-referral back to Budget and Finance 840 against, and I'd like to open the public hearing. All right, I declare the public hearing open. Again, uh, what I'm gonna do is look for a show of hands for those in favor of the measure and those who are here in opposition to the measure. First, a show of hands who are in favor of the budget ordinance. If you would, please raise your hand. All right, I see um, a couple of people. Those who are here in opposition to the budget ordinance, please raise your hand. Okay, so we are gonna start with those in favor of the um, budget ordinance. If you would come to the front to speak. And again, if you will, um, if you will identify yourself, uh, give us your name and address, uh, and um, particularly for Council Member Hauser, former Council Member Hauser, yesterday was her birthday. Thanks All for right. that. You're welcome. <laughs> I, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the council, I'm Ginger Hauser. I reside at 2510 Natchez Trace. I'm in District 18 in Berkeley Allen's district. And let me start off by saying thank you. I know all too well how many hours June takes as a council member, and I appreciate the time that you give to your district and to the city. You make our lives better and our homes better. I'm here today to ask you to support the Nashville Grad Initiative that the mayor announced on December the 5th that is in the budget. It is to support financially the barriers that are keeping our Nashville students from graduating from college. You may ask, why is that important? It is important because right now today, 60% of the jobs in Nashville require some college degree in order to meet the needs of those jobs. However, only 45.5% of working age adults currently have a college degree. So we are 14.5% behind in having a skilled workforce. When Nashville State succeeds, Nashville succeeds. You may ask me why I say that. I say that because of Metro Nashville Public School graduates, Nashville State Community College is the number one institution that they come to. So if they don't succeed there, they are not succeeding in college. We also serve more adults than any other community college in the state. Last year, over 5,200 Nashvillians came and attended Nashville State Community College. However, national research, state research, and local reports that have recently come out say that first-generation college students 
low-income students, underrepresented minorities are struggling nationally to compete college. And it's not because they don't want to. They want to complete college. They know it will be their ticket to the middle class. It's because of the financial obligations and the life responsibilities that they have that are getting in the way of them completing and having that ticket to the middle class. What Nashville grad will do will support students financially after financial aid, and if they need books paid for, it will pay for books. If they need to take an industry certification, let's say a welding certification, it will pay for that. It will also bring the foremost model of raising community college graduation rates called the Cooney ASAP program to Nashville. We will be the first community college in the Southeast to bring it. It has shown to double graduation rates from students in Ohio and New York, and that is part of this program. We are committed to making sure that Nashville has an educated workforce, and I appreciate your support for Nashville grad. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, name, address, three minutes. Hi, my name is Dimitri Ridley. Um, I live at 2709 Old Matthews Road. I am a recent Nashville State graduate, and um, I'm here to advocate for the Nash grad program. Um, I didn't know the program existed until a few hours ago when my advisor, David Edgington, who you'll hear from later, uh, called me and asked me to speak. So I can't say for how it'll help people in general, but I can say how it would have helped me. My first year in high school, College, my bad. My first year in college um, was quite a tricky one. Uh, my family was living paycheck to paycheck, and the only way we could afford to get around was the family vehicle. And um, it was quite a drive. I had to drive 30 minutes to White House, Tennessee to drop my stepdad off, and then another 30 minutes to Antioch to take my mom to her class, and then 30 minutes to Nashville State, where I had classes. And um, one of those days, after a long day of work at night, two exams and an essay and during the day, um, I had the unfortunate event of falling asleep behind the wheel just because I was so exhausted from doing all this traveling and schooling and because I couldn't afford the, the bus, but I'd already told myself I'm going to finish college. And I had the unfortunate event of colliding with the 18-wheeler. Fortunately, I was okay, but the car was totaled. But that took a big chunk out of the finances that we had, and I couldn't get to work, so I lost my job. My stepdad lost his job, and we were left. I was missed a lot of days because I couldn't afford to get to school. We had no money. So um, when I did my research about the Nash grad program, I saw that transportation was one of the things they would help with. And I can't say for sure that you know this will help a lot of people who are in my situation. I don't know if there are people in my situation. But if there are, I would love to keep them from what I had to go through, the finances that, went, that were messing up, the livelihoods. I, was, I still can't drive down 65 too long without thinking I might wreck again, even though I'm, even if I'm wide awake. So please support the, sorry, support the Nash grad uh, program. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm David Edgington, 212 Trace Park Court West, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, 37221. I'm a faculty member at Nashville State Community College, and I'm here to support Nashville grad. Uh, I'm an associate professor uh, and director of music at Nashville State. We have a growing program, and it offers an Associate of Fine Arts where students can earn their associate degree and transfer into a four-year institution as a junior, um, seamlessly into that new program. Um, I have phenomenal students at our school. They're amazing students. Um, our jazz ensemble uh, just this past month was awarded the, the prestigious uh, Downbeat Magazine Award as best community college rock band in the country. Um, all of our music students are associated with a um, kung fu club. The two don't normally go together. But um, the dedication they learn helps uh, build our music program. And through that kung fu club, we have three state champions and three national champions. So our community college, I feel like they are nationally recognized and have accomplished amazing things. And I see great potential with them. I also see certain hurdles to them um, getting a, uh, graduating and contributing back to the community. Uh, one of those is transportation. 
Um, some of our students are there in the morning when I arrive, and they're there long after I leave because they're waiting on a family member to pick them up. Uh, Nashville Grad will help provide uh, bus passes that'll let their time be more focused on campus and let them engage in other aspects of their life and community. Um, it will allow for a full-time advisor on campus. Um, the important, it's important that students um, succeed in the seams of their education. And I see that when they transfer over from a community college to a four-year institution, a lot of times they fall between the cracks. Maybe a class doesn't transfer. Um, and a lot of times this is where their education stops because of those hurdles. A full-time advisor will help them through those challenges. And finally, it will provide funds for emergency. Um, I have students that, the majority of my students were, um, are full-time students for financial aid purposes. They work full-time. Oftentimes, their job is a night course. And they have family duties. And oftentimes, they are single parents. So there's no, there's no allowance for, for a problem to happen. And when something does, when a bill doesn't get paid, when a car accident, when there's an illness, um, school is usually the first thing to be put on the side. And once that's put to the side, the challenge of getting back and starting up again is, is difficult. So I think having those emergency funds through Nashville Grad will help students be successful in that way. We are very grateful to the mayor and council for providing Nashvilleians, no matter what their background, an opportunity to accomplish a college education um, through Tennessee Promise and Tennessee Reconnect. I feel that Nashville grad will provide the uh, funds they need to help them be successful. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Swain. Good evening. My name is uh, Carol Swain, and I didn't plan to speak tonight about that issue, but I can say that I am a community college graduate, and I'm a strong proponent of community colleges. I know that they offer Americans that come from a variety of backgrounds a second chance. And I'm speaking not in favor of the mayor's budget, but, also, but in favor of education. We do need an educated, workforce, and we do need to provide support for people who come from disadvantaged backgrounds. And so I give my support to programs like that that give people the chances that they would not otherwise have. And for those of you who don't know my full story, I was a high school dropout. I was one of 12. I married at 16. Uh, by the time I was 21, I had three small children. I got a high school equivalency, a GED, went to a community college and got the first of five degrees, and I became um, a professor earning tenure at Vanderbilt and Princeton, Princeton first. And so, again, I support giving people second chances through education. Thank you. Ms. Wayne, can I get an address from you? Um, the whole, my entire home, home address? Just, I just need an address for purposes of our record. Okay, I'm in uh, Council Member Swope's district, and um, my address, <laughs> I'd rather not make my, my address public. Uh, well, okay, 6665 Christian Stead Lane. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else wish to speak in favor of uh, the budget? If so, please um, come forward. All right, seeing nobody else in favor, uh, those who are in opposition to the budget, uh, those who wish to speak, if you will line up at the podium. Again, I need uh, name, address, and uh, you've got um, three minutes. Are you ready now? I am ready. <laughs> Proceed ahead. My name is Honey Russell. I'm in 1217 Bryan Street, the best district, 11, Larry Hager. That's the second compliment he's gotten today. Um, oh, yeah. He knows he's the best. Um, and I work for Metro Schools. I have for over 20 years. And I just want to make sure that we keep on the forefront, that Metro Schools faculty and staff are important. They are more important than the buildings that you build downtown because the people who build the buildings had to go to school. You are sitting here 
you had to go to school. Your children go to school, whether it's public or private. There was a teacher, a custodian, a cafeteria worker, a support staff member educating your children. Well, again, whether it's public or private, that should be on the forefront, not just your beautiful skyline. Make sure that when you vote to pass a budget, you include the people who actually make Nashville great, not just your buildings, because at the end of the day, they are really irrelevant. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is Liza Ramage, and I live at 1400 Rosa L. Parks Boulevard in District 19. Freddie O'Connell is my council member, and I am a member of NOAA. You may know that Metro Schools moved this year to end suspension, expulsion, and arrest of pre-K through fourth grade students. This is an important step in stopping the school to prison pipeline. However, these kids, their teachers, and their classmates, for these kids, their teachers, and their classmates, there must be resources in the local school to deal with serious behavior problems. For this reason, NOAA is pleased that care centers staffed with well-trained care specialists are included in the 2019-2020 MNPS budget for the 10 schools with greatest need. These centers will provide students with short-term separation from the classroom, de-escalation, time to reflect and to repair, excuse me, to repair harm caused. Because these care centers will be such an important resource, NOAA wants to make sure that they are a budget priority. At the same time, NOAA strongly supports the full pay raise for Metro teachers. Teachers deserve this raise, and our kids deserve teachers who are paid a livable wage. For this reason, NOAA urges you, our council, to make certain the full MMPS budget is funded. Please fund the entire Metro Schools budget, and we are willing to pay our tax increase to see this done. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mary Holden. I live at 4709 Chepstow Drive in District 27, Council Member Blaylock's district. Um, I am an MMPS teacher and parent. I have a middle schooler, and I teach middle school. Lots of fun times at my house. I care deeply about our public schools. In fact, it's my unpaid summer break, and yet I spend all day at a training. My question is, do you care about our schools? To me, it's really that simple. If you value public education, you will show it by fully funding our schools. The first step is to vote no on the mayor's budget. The second step is to vote yes on the Mendes Davis budget. We need this property tax correction to start the process of fully funding our schools. It's not the solution, it's only the beginning of the solution. When I moved to Nashville six years ago, from Southern California. I had been teaching for 12 years, and at that time, I took a $40,000 pay cut to teach in MMPS. Now that we are in its city, we should be keeping up with the rising cost of living here in terms of teacher salaries, but we are not. We should be keeping up with capital demands and school repairs and upgrades, but we are not. We should be doing a lot more to actually be in its city for the people who live here, but we are not. Instead, we are selling out to corporations and the tourism industry. There have been many incentives for them, but now we need to focus on taking care of our city and its needs, including our public schools and our teachers. This is your chance to be the heroes, in my opinion. Be the ones who fix the problem and pave the way for Nashville to truly be a world-class place to live. I don't want a 3% raise. It's a slap in the face. It doesn't even cover a cost of living adjustment. It is nothing but a hollow attempt to make things right. It's an insult. 
As a teacher and a parent, I have faith that the school board and the district led by Dr. Battle are doing their best to budget accordingly, but they can't keep cutting their way toward a fully funded system. You all seem to agree that schools have been chronically underfunded by, for years, but you have the responsibility to fix that. Pass the Mendes Davis budget. Then next fiscal year, find the money we need for a world-class school system. Like a colleague recently said, figure it out. This will tell me and all of us that you do value our children. If you care about our kids, prove it with your votes. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is Catherine Green. I live at 1506 Preston Drive in District 7. Um, Vice Mayor Shulman graciously had these copied. This is, these are documents that support um, our support of the Mendes Davis budget. If you can hand that to the guard, that'd be great. I'm a fourth grade teacher with MNPS. I, teachers are fighting for an equitable education for our students. We may be discussing teacher pay, but it is your commitment to the education of our city's children that we are really talking about. Does this council have the interest of our 71% economically disadvantaged student body and proper perspective? This, that is a simple question. The evidence thus far says no but you can change that. Many affluent families in Nashville send their children to private schools. In fact, District 34 made a top 10 list of neighborhoods with the highest percentage of students in private schools in the country, and that is fine. However, no citizen can or should evade their responsibility to the public education and opportunities it affords 90% of students in our country. A democratic society cannot exist without a proper public education. Public schools are the single most important investment a society can make. This is where Nashville is failing. Through, chron through the chronic underfunding of MNPS, you are telling our public school families, of whom the majority are minority, that they are not as important as keeping the rich folks happy through low property taxes. Such an approach has the appearance of racial and economic animus and an effort to create or keep one class down and one up. Elitism is not acceptable. This council has a decision to make. You either begin to take steps towards providing an equitable education for our city's most vulnerable children, or continue to turn your back on them and say, I'm sorry, you just don't matter enough. You are being given an opportunity, an opportunity to positively impact the upward mobility of an entire generation of Nashville's children and send the message that they are indeed worthy. You get to be the champions for over 80,000 kids. How can you pass that up? And as the Brandy Carlisle song says, sometimes the hardest thing and the right thing are the same. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is Mary Jo Cram. I live on 30, 3729 Cedarwood Drive in Inglewood, District 7, Anthony Davis's district. I'm a Metro teacher. My son is a first grader at Dan Mills Elementary. I'm here to speak in favor of the Anthony Davis Bob Mendez budget. Um, last year's budget was balanced on the backs of teachers. Teachers took a pay cut so that Nashville could continue to enjoy a historically low property tax rate. Because our pay went down while our family's expenses went up, teachers have had to pinch pennies and make cuts in our family's budgets this year. So it is entirely appropriate for Metro Council to do the same with the city's budget. But this year, pinching pennies was not enough to keep my family afloat. I became one of many MNPS teachers with a second job. I teach English over the internet to children on the other side of the world during the hours when I need to be sleeping. Just as I've had to work harder and make sacrifices to balance my family's budget, it is entirely appropriate for the whole city of Nashville to work harder and make sacrifices to fund our schools. If you can't cut enough money to fund the schools, then you have to raise the revenue by raising taxes. That's your job. That's how it works for teachers' family budgets, and that's how it should work for Metro. If this year is a repeat of last year, and you don't have the courage to raise taxes in an election year, then you don't deserve your office, and teachers will mobilize to make sure you don't keep it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. 
Good evening. My name is Mrs. A.C. Atre Male Arthur Snodgrass. I live at 140 Ivy Hill Lane. I'm here today as a full-time, very hardworking, exceptional ed paraprofessional, and I've been so for the past six years. I proudly work with medically fragile students who are severely and profoundly disabled, some of the most precious and most vulnerable members of our community. I work alongside extremely dedicated educators like myself who are proud, hardworking, underappreciated, grossly and disrespectfully underpaid. What we educators provide your students is essential to their development and for that reason it is essential that you approve a moral budget. A year ago this month, I stood before many of you and spoke of the city's budget issues. I spoke to many of you personally, including Ms. Gilmore, who listened to my plea and agreed that funds spent on any child's well-being is never a waste. It is never a mistake. Let me share with you my personal boiling point. Earlier this school year, I received a text from a fellow para and friend, Michelle, stating that her son, my favorite student, Dalton, was in the ICU. As I hurriedly got into the car, I looked at my gas tank and paused, asking myself if I had enough gas to get to the hospital to support my student and to work the remainder of the week. Yes, many Metro workers' budgets are that tight. I am one of the many Metro workers making under $15 an hour, specifically $13.48 an hour after over six years. But nothing, especially gas money, should prevent us or any teacher from caring for students in need, especially in a prosperous it city. May I remind you of your responsibility to lead Metro in the right direction, to uphold the promise you made when you were elected, to support those who support your students. One cannot claim to put children and their families first while pulling the rug out from under teachers and, their, and the members of the community that keep this city safe. I only have three minutes, so I literally do not have the time to share with you every story of the teaching coworkers who come into work exhausted from one third hour shift, one third shift position, and leave at the end of the long work day to go to their other part time job. My friends and coworker, Michelle, who I just spoke of, could not make it here today because why? She's at her third job. So I am here today, as I was last year, appealing to your sense of empathy and, and hum humanity. None of us should have to choose between caring for your students and supporting our own families. But that's exactly what we've had to do. Our students deserve the very best, but we are losing some of the most incredible, dedicated educators that I've ever had the honor to work alongside. So please, prove to me, prove to us, and to yourselves that you understand, that you, that you care, and that you want to make sure that not one student, not one teacher, not one school, not one Metro worker falls through the cracks. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kat Hogan, and I live at 109 Pleasant Park Boulevard. I work at the Department of Emergency Communications for 14 years tomorrow. Um, I'm thankful to the council members who have come to the center to see what it's like every day uh, for us to answer 911 calls for the city. Um, every year, we invite you out to see what we do um, so that you can better understand our roles in the world of public safety um, and why our jobs are important and why we need to be considered under the public safety domain. Uh, but I understand you're busy. Um, just so you know, when you're dropping your kids off at school or at daycare, we are at work. Um, when you're on your way to work, we're at work. Uh, when you're on your date night, we're at work. Uh, when you're sleeping at night, we're at work. Um, right now, we're currently 39 uh, employees short. This is a crisis for our center. Uh, myself and my coworkers work uh, overtime shifts every week to ensure the safety of our neighbors and the massive number of, number of visitors uh, we receive each week. I mean, especially this week with uh, the Music City Festival. Um, our current work plan is unsustainable, but we are Nashville and we are here to answer the calls and dispatch the police, fire, and EMS units. Uh, there's no metaphorical fat to cut off the bone in our city budget. We have a revenue shortfall that can be corrected. You all can correct this. Uh, like I said, we are Nashville. Um, we love, uh, we would love to have raises, yes, but you've disappointed us in the past. And as a city, we'll do what we do best. We'll go back out and we'll keep doing what we do um, because, uh, not because we have faith in you, and I'm sorry about that, but because the city has faith in us. Um, and the citizens and the visitors of Nashville believe in us and depend on us, and so that's what we have to do. Um, 
We need elected council people tonight to be courageous and to care more about our city and less about polls and re-elections. We need you to pass the property tax adjustment and to fix the budget crisis that previous mayors chose to ignore. We need you to be strong and to vote for what's best for our most vulnerable city members. Uh, please don't hide and be bullied by others in the administration. Uh, you know what's right to do. Uh, we can't wait another year. Our city services can't wait another year. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello, my name is Richard Tippett, 302 50th Avenue North. That's uh, Kathleen Murphy's district. I, I guess she saw me coming, so uh, she split. That's all right. <laughs> We're going to do. Uh, uh, it's great to see all of you. I uh, hope you remember me. Uh, myself and some really good friends of mine delivered an invoice for payment due to this council in the amount of $38 million on January 15th. And today, uh, I'm reminding uh, everyone on this council that uh, 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 that's an outstanding debt. We're still waiting on that. Schools and their teachers, fire department, and their firefighters, police force, and their officers, water, public works, parks and recreations, and their employees, along with social services, 911 dispatch, and the rest of Metro operations, need their funding and pay raises. We are, reminding, we, we are reminding everyone on this council of the funding that was promised and to pass a moral budget, a moral budget that funds our city's services so we continue to be a thriving city. Thank you very much. Thank you. I love Kathleen, by the way. I'll tell her you sent her your best. All right. <laughs> Good evening. I'm James Brown. I live at 4021 Shufell Court in District 30, and I can't help but notice that Mr. Potts is missing. You have my apologies for uh, if I'm a little unkempt this evening. You see, I've been working in an elementary school all day, and our buildings just aren't as clean since Uncle Jesse outsourced our custodians. I work in MMPS IT, bringing the internet to the classrooms, and I really like my job but I regularly see my coworkers leave for other jobs that pay 50% and more above our pay for doing the same, sometimes even less work. Now our bennies are good, they're not that good. But in spite of that, that's really not why I'm here tonight. It's not what pulls me out, makes me wanna to talk to y'all. I'm a lot more concerned about our people hundreds of my coworkers that aren't making a living wage that are going to work every day friends secretaries that dash out as soon as this bell rings so they can get to their second job my friend honey russell who you heard earlier um, she works all week long with delicate children and then works the weekends as a secretary she doesn't have any days off I know people who work all day as an in-school suspension monitor and then don't even leave the building. They simply pick up a mop and clean the building for the rest of the night. So they effectively spend every waking moment five days a week working in their school. And that's possible because Uncle Jesse outsourced them. I want to say anybody who works for a living ought to make a living. It's pretty simple. If the job's worth doing, it's worth paying for. But work in every waking moment of your life just to keep a roof over your head and food in your cupboard, that's not living. Vote for the Mendez budget and quit balancing the budget on our back. Thank you. Hello, my name is LaKendra Glenn. I live at 729 Rowan Drive, and I am a paraprofessional for MMPS. I've been working for MMPS for four years. I wasn't gonna speak, but something, I just had to share something with you. I could tell you how I work two jobs, or how our schools don't have enough resources, or how this year I was homeless for over a month, but I'm gonna tell you about when I first met Mayor Briley. We celebrate May, um, 
Read Me Week every year at school. And he was invited to my school, Robert Churchill Elementary, to read to some of his kids. And I try to stay out the way when there's visitors in the school, but I found myself, well, Mayor Briley was behind me and my principal. My principal introduced me as the paraprofessional. He kindly asked me what was a paraprofessional. I told him I worked with mainly exceptional education kids, special needs kids. He looked at me and says, you don't make enough. I looked at him, I kind of smiled. He says, you don't make enough. So I'm here to say that I don't make enough, the city workers don't make enough, and 3% is not enough. Thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Johnny Davis. I live at 1315 North 5th Street, Nashville, Tennessee, and I've been employed at uh, Nashville General Hospital for 12 years. I'd like to start by thanking Mayor Browley and this council for fully funding Nashville General Hospital. It wasn't without conditions. The council is affirming that we operate within budget, and NGH has done so, exceeding expectations, not just in patient services, but increasing its reach throughout Nashville led by Dr. Joseph Webb, the executive team, and all of our talented staff, Nashville General is the very essence of morality, which leads me to this year's theme, a moral budget. But first, we should consider what is immoral, and it is immoral to have a fire and police department that does not stand, that, that is not up to standard, as they are charged with keeping our city safe. Many would consider Nashville's growth and new anonymity is impressive, but we are not impressed. We are not tourists. We live here. We want our teachers to get the competitive wages they deserve. Let's keep our promises. Just as you did with Nashville General, we expect this council to do what is morally right, support all of our Metro employees. We want this council to demonstrate courage and the will to do what benefits all of its citizens. Support the Mendez Davis bill. This will help ensure that all of these prospery businesses pay their fair share and help Nashville become what it so badly wants to be referred to as the is city. Support a moral budget now. Thank you for listening. Let's get it done. All right, thank you. Hi, my name is Angie Phelps. I live at 5125 Fredericksburg Way East. Uh, my council member is Mr. Swope. Um, and so I am here, I live and teach in this amazing city. My children also attend public school here in middle and high school. Um, I'm very proud of their schools. And I'm asking you to support the Mendez Davis budget proposal that includes a property tax adjustment. And I am doing this because we are asking for increased funding for multiple reasons. One of them is competitive compensation in order to attract and retain high quality teachers in MNPS for all the students. We also want to maintain our class sizes so that um, we can have an appropriate learning environment. We also want more resources that would include funding for math and reading curriculum, technology in the classroom, and enrichment resources that support the 21st century skills of collaboration, creativity, communication, and critical thinking. And I'm asking for all of you to embrace those skills as you consider the budget proposal. Our message tonight message from my colleagues and myself is one of hope, not anger. We want to shift the way our city le leaders view education, and we implore, implore you to see students as an investment, not as an, exp as an expense. The return of that investment starts with quality teachers and better resources. As Nashville continues to grow, as the IT city, we want IT to be a city with fully funded schools. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yes, sir.
All right, my name is Eric Warfield. I'm from District 2, 3838 Dunbar Drive. Um, just going to get to the chase. I was back there trying to write a nice speech, and we're just going to talk from the heart. Your budget for your schools needs to be funded. All night you've heard about the schools, teachers, and support staff in the building. Well, as a bus driver, I'm going to take you outside the building. Your teachers get nervous when you have 25 students in a class. As a driver, I have to haul 50 to 84 students by myself. As a special needs driver, they haul your most critical and special needs kids across the district because the school closest to them may not have the classes they need. So that natural traffic that you complain about, we drive on a daily basis all across this district. But yet, your school bus drivers make less than your trash man or your dog catcher. So therefore, you pay the people that take away what you don't want more money than you pay the person that is carrying your future. You pay the person that is monitoring those children on the buses. They can work at a clothing store and make that amount or more just putting clothing back on the route on the rack. Bottom line, when you want the best, you need to pay for it. When you want qualified, you need to pay for it. You keep hearing that we're 50 drivers short. That is only in the last year and a half. That's not counting the 100 drivers we already lost prior to that. When we, man before me, talked about Uncle Jesse Register, yeah. That's when you cut your drivers down to seven hours a day. We just got back the eight hours two, three years ago, and we still cannot get the drivers in the seat. Bottom line, we're losing them quicker than we can keep them, and I need you to understand that. That 3%, it does nothing. You give me 3%, but you increase my insurance. So that little dollar or whatever you just gave me, I turn right around and hand it right back to you. That does nothing for my house note, my car note, my insurance payments that I still have to pay outside of that. So guarantee you, these employees are having to work this job plus a second job, a third job. So at the end of the year when I do my taxes, I don't turn in one W-2. I turn in one, two, three, four, or up to five. That's unnecessary when I'm trying to do the job that I love on a daily basis and have been doing for 27 years. All right, thank you. Good evening. My name is Katherine Pratt. I live at 81 Jones Circle in Old Hickory. Um, I live and send my children to school in District 11. I work at a small elementary school in District 10, and I'd like to take a quick moment to share with you what happened in my building this year. In October of 2018, we lost an exceptional education teacher in the middle of the year to another district. In November of 2018, we lost a second grade teacher. In December of 2018, we lost a kindergarten teacher to another district. In January of 2019, we lost a first grade teacher to another district. In May of 2019, we lost a third grade teacher to another district. And we also lost a beloved first grade teacher who was also our teacher of the year who had been in our building for 20 years to another district. Vacancy numbers tend to increase over the summer as teachers use their time off to seek employment in another district. Teachers are losing hope and so we are losing teachers. Our kids can't afford this kind of disruption. We have to do better for our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I was told that I have three minutes, but I'm going to give you 60 seconds of those back. My name is Sally Woodard. My address is 706 Lishy Avenue, and I am in District 5. I work for Nashville General Hospital. First and foremost, I want to say thank you so much for supporting General. We appreciate it. We are needed in the community. Um, I have two pages of beautiful words, but um, I don't need to. I don't need to read those. I'll say. Um, I'll say this. I don't make a living wage. I make under fifteen dollars an hour. I just moved back to Nashville from Clarksville, Tennessee, where I drove a hundred plus miles every day to get to my job at Nashville General, which I love. I love my patients. 
I make $14.01 an hour. So if we're going to use basic math, it took me 50, I'm sorry, no, it took me, um, it says it's, it's 50, 50 plus miles from Clarksville to Nashville. No, I, I lived off of exit 11. And after I got off at exit 11, it took me an additional 15 to 20 minutes to get home. So I drove back and forth every day for a year, not because I make so much, but because I love my job. I love what I do. I love the community that we serve. I don't make, en I didn't make enough to live in Clarksville, which I moved to Clarksville because my job that I, that I love so much, it doesn't pay me enough. You can't make it off of $14.01 an hour. I'm not a frivolous person. I don't, I don't have extravagant things. So if you think that I can live off of $14.01 an hour, ask yourself this, how well could you live? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Anna Corella. My address is 1600 Haynes Mead Circle in District 2. Um, I also own a rental property in District 6. And I'm not a public employee. Um, I'm a homeowner, so I should be opposed to a property tax increase, but I'm not. I'm definitely for it. Um, and that's because I want to live in a community where teachers and public employees get paid a living wage. So I'm asking you to please support the Mendez Davis proposal for a tax, property tax increase. I'm willing to pay for it, and I hope you are too. All right, thank you. Good evening. My name is Rico C. Sr. I'm an 18th year veteran of Metro Nashville Public Schools as a restorative practice assistant. When employees of Metro Schools are employed, they are given a pay scale showing their step raises within those five or 10 years. And within those five or 10 years, many step raises were not given. The years of 2011 through 2014, of course on last year in 2018, and also it's not in the mayor's funding budget for this year. Each year, we stand before you asking you con to continue to be champions for Metro Davidson County Public Schools employees, especially the teachers and the support staff workers. Support staff workers as such as these in-school suspension monitors, the paraprofessionals, the custodians, the secretary, the bookkeeper, now the restorative practice assistants. Now I'm asking you to be a gladiator, to put on your sword and to put up your shield and to go to battle for our students and for the workers that support our students. You have heard their cries. You have heard their testimonies. It's a sad and shame that we are the it city and we have to come before you to ask for a raise. And we should not have to do that. Quit kicking us with two and 3% and 5%. Fund the budget, find the way to fund it. Come together as one unit, holding each other's hand saying that we're gonna do whatever it takes to fund our schools. So I'm asking you, not just as Rico C. Senior, but as Reverend Rico C. Senior, to support our teachers and support staff, employees of Metro Davidson County Public Schools. God bless you, and it's good to see you, Mrs. Scott Davis, amen. Reverend, I, I need your, uh, I need to get an address from you. 2112 Sunset Circle. All right, thank you. District 5. Got it. God bless you. Thanks. Amen. <laughs> well, good evening. My name is James Smallwood. I'm president of the Nashville Fraternal Order Police. I represent the rank and file police officers of the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department and their voice. Uh, we are located at 440 Welshwood Drive in Nashville, Tennessee. 
Uh, I'm not going to belabor the same point that you've heard over and over tonight, but I am just going to speak briefly on the fact that uh, Metro employees have been ignored for a, an extended period of time, and it's time for that to stop happening. Um, this, this body, here we are, the same time, a year later, having the same discussion, where Metro employees are not feeling the support, where teachers by the thousand are calling in sick because they feel like the administration of the city doesn't support them, where hundreds of police officers are literally resigning their positions in the police department and going elsewhere because they don't feel like the city stands behind them and they don't feel like their pay is commensurate with the responsibilities of their job. This council has proven that it cannot cut its way to a solution. We were here until after midnight last year trying to cut our way to the solution and we couldn't do it. I appreciate Councilman Mendez and his co-sponsor for, for proposing this, this uh, tax correction. Clearly our tax rate is lower than it's ever been in the history of Metro. And it's time for us to find a way to solve this, this looming problem for our employees. If we are not prepared to stand up and vote for a correction to solve the problem to fund our budget, then we need to be, pre be prepared to stand up and provide a solution that is an alternative and is viable. Otherwise, we expect you to explain yourself, and if you can't, we expect you to vacate your office, and I thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Lynn Hoyt. My address is 160 Haverford Avenue, um, Council Rep Johnson's district. And I am the PTO president of Hume Fogg High School, and I serve on the board of the Bordeaux North Nashville Community PTA. And I'm here to ask you to support the Mendez Davis tax correction. The mayor's budget is not enough, and we must work to fully fund MMPS. Yes, we have a state that has created laws that means a city, as a city, we cannot seem to benefit from our success in a way that funds city services, our bus drivers, our police, our firefighters, teachers, student aides, school secretaries. We need our care centers. MMPS is in crisis. When wealthy families have children in crisis, they put more resources in, not less. They fund tutors and therapists and put their children in schools with smaller class sizes to get their children the attention they need. Our children need attention, and that attention comes from teachers. They are the front lines. They need to be paid and treated as the professionals they are with a fully funded budget. We have an HR crisis in MPS. It is the perfect storm. Teachers with experience and higher degrees quit. Teachers with little or no experience fill our schools, especially our priority schools. Coursework is given online at low quality. Students fail the, the state test. Schools are labeled failing. Enrollment drops. Schools close. MMPS strengths and the vi vicious cycle continues again. Fully funding can help stop this so we don't end up like Detroit. We must, as a city, make the effort to fully fund our schools or we will not, because right, right now, quite frankly, we have three school systems we're funding. MMPS zone schools and magnets, charters, and now vouchers, all funded with the same pot of money. Nashville, what, are, what do we want? Closing schools is not a school improvement plan. It does nothing to address the academic needs of students. Teachers do that. We can't cut our way to success. Please be bold, be strategic. The hope for all of our children cannot wait. Please support the Mendez Davis budget. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Casey McGrath, and I live at 245 Hickory Dale Drive. I live and teach in District 15. Um, I'm asking you to vote yes on the property tax increase proposed by Mendes and Davis. Our property tax is at one of the lowest points since the Metropolitan Nash Government of Nashville was founded in 1963. And Nashville has the lowest property tax of large counties in Tennessee. Yet we are one of the largest, and we are the capital of Tennessee. That is ridiculous. Um, a majority of the teachers I know are working part-time over the summer or full-time, and a lot of those also work those part-time jobs during the school year. Our students deserve teachers who are focused on them and them alone. They don't deserve teachers who are focused on other jobs 
besides focusing on how to help these students and teach them well. Um, as an educator, I see firsthand the way our students suffer because of a lack of funding in this district. It is vital that our teachers receive a significant raise in order to retain and attract highly qualified teachers. Research shows that teacher quality is the number one factor that determines student success. We cannot expect qualified teachers to stay in the district when they are not being fairly compensated and receiving staff increases like other professionals are accustomed to. We are professionals as well. Currently, there are over 680 vacancies in the district. It is essential that the Board of Education's budget be fully funded in order to give our students the education that they deserve. We cannot continue to underserve student populations who have been historically underserved in our country. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good evening, uh, Bobby Baskin, 1300 Weeping Cherry Lane, Hermitage, Tennessee. I'm a Metro teacher. I'm a member of a group called Sick Teachers and I'm a proponent of fully funding MNPS. Our kids and all of these excellent workforce people that you have deserve it. Things that we would look for from this council, that every student have a certified teacher in their classroom, that students have a safe ride to and from school, that teachers are paid a decent wage and a living wage for all MNPS employees, and textbooks for all of our students. Thank you for the work that you guys do for our city, and please, please do the right thing and fully fund MNPS. All right, thank you. Hi, I'm Melissa Lindsay. I live at 5170 uh, Hickory Hollow Parkway. Um, I've been a teacher in Metro for 10 years, but I've been a teacher in general for 12. Um, two years ago, I was having a baby and my mom sent me an article in the Tennessean that said that um, that Metro was gonna pay all its, give all of its employees paid maternity leave. Upon further investigation, there was only one group that was disqualified from that and that was teachers. And as a coincidence, that's like the most female dominated um, profession that you, uh, that that works for the C. So um, yeah, I was pretty disappointed and it left me with a really bad taste in my mouth for how the Nashville government um, saw its teachers and felt about its teachers. Um, however, my children go to Metro schools um, and uh, my son who was in eighth grade this past school year went all year without an official certified math teacher in his classroom. Um, his science teacher picked up the slack during his planning period. Um, we've got to make this competitive. Our kids go here. This is not just about teacher raises. It's about respect and it's about doing the best for our kids and hiring the best qualified people for our kids. Two years ago, we lost a whole science department to other counties. I make $2,600 a month and 800 of it goes to childcare. Other counties are providing child care. We are not giving our employees a good enough deal to incentivize them to stay. You guys are not prote protecting your investment. Ki uh, teachers are going to professional developments and learning new things, and that's awesome. And then the next year, they're gone. So um, I would ask you to support the Mendez Davis budget um, so that we can make ourselves a little bit more competitive with our surrounding counties so that our kids aren't taught by either no teacher or all first year teachers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. I'm James Bradley. I reside at 2414 Middle Street, District 2, Councilman uh, DeCostas Hastings. I want to share something with you just for a moment. In the past 10 years, over 100,000 people moved to Nashville. And no matter how personal you feel about the growth, it does one thing for sure more demands on a public service and Metro employees. And many of us are not new to this. We were here during the flood and during the recession. We sacrificed promises and step increases for difficult years. Please keep in mind that not only did the Metro employees make sacrifices, but their families made sacrifices as well. So in the last year, we were asked to sacrifice again while the city is booming, all because of a mistake in, made in 2017 and setting the property tax rate, 
we went, we went without being a big commercial, we went without a while being, while well, big commercial properties made huge profits. Now, now's the time to invest in our city, not Shotway. Our schools have been underfunded for decades. Our public safety personnel are stretched and stretched thin, making all of us less safe. We need to invest so we can have safe streets that don't flood when it rain, sidewalks in every neighborhood. Now, if we don't make those investments now, what happens if there's a recession? And you don't have to tell Metro and school employees, we already know. Let's fix the problem. Let's fund our schools, pay Metro employees, so we can invest in our city and give back to our city. We'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Sharon Osborne. I reside at 778 Good Pasture Terrace, Dave Rosenberg's um, district. I want to read a quote to you from We Are Teachers. I wasn't born just to teach. I was born to inspire others, to change people, and to never give up, even when faced with challenges that seem impossible. At the age of 35, I went back to school and finished my undergrad after I stayed home with my two children until they entered Harpeth Valley Elementary School. I subbed in Metro for almost five years before deciding to go back to, get, to finish my undergrad. I finished and graduated at Tennessee State University and began my journey as an educator at some of the most difficult schools. I've only taught in um, Title I schools, and that is where my heart is led. I'm not here to beg you for a race, because fortunately I do have a husband that makes a good living. However, I'm begging you to think about the children that we serve. They need us. This year I spent in first grade, working two positions, not getting paid but for one, stayed many hours after school, neglected my own family so that I could do what was right by the children that I serve and by the teachers I worked with beside. It's not okay. It's not okay for our children to have three kindergarten teachers or classrooms and only one certified teacher be in the school the entire year. That's what happened at my school this year. I'm going to be in um, a, a full-time first grade teacher next year, and I'm up against the children coming into my class not reading on grade level. Year after year, I experience this. Metro sent me back to school within about three years of me um, finishing my undergrad. And they sent me back to get my EL certification, which I now have a master's in EL. They did send me back a school, to school a second time to get my reading recovery certificate. Reading is my heart. But each year, it is not fair to me to have to use what I know is right by children and still see them fail. Please consider our children. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Jackie Gomez and I live at 52 Waikiki Boulevard. Um, I am a product of MNPS. I graduated from Antioch High School, I went to college locally. And while I do not have children um, in the area, I do um, have students that are very near and dear to my heart. I've worked in youth development and currently have a Girl Scout where all of my girls do attend MNPS. I have family members who are also products of the school system and friends who are teachers in the school system. 
I watch the MNPS uh, board meetings for fun. I, I really care about the future of our children um, and the state of Nashville, quite frankly. I'm terrified that I won't be able to live um, in the houses that I would dream of living in when I was on the school bus. Um, and, and I work for the private sector. Um, so I implore you to think um, critically about your roles as servant leaders and not so much as terms or popularity, but what this city deserves, what our educators deserves, what our students deserve. Um, I know that most of you have students in the system. I know that most of you know teachers and that this is a topic that we can all agree on. I know I'm partially preaching to the choir, but I please, I ask you to fund our schools. If we don't prioritize this now, we will be paying for it in years to come. We need to make this a priority and we need to um, fund our schools. Thank you. Thank you. I guess I'm the last one up. My name is Charles, Charles Judd. I work at McGavick High School. I work in special needs with the artistic and special need kids. I'm asking for additional funding for the programs that we have. If you can't give us a raise, at least give them one. That's it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Odessa Kelly, 1127 Cahal Avenue. Uh, District 7, Councilman Davis, what up though? So, I work in uh, District 19 in Freddie O'Connell's district. Uh, I think you've heard the same stories. Uh, most of you've heard me talk before. So I wanna tell you a story. I work at Napier Community Center. Uh, it's in one of the most impoverished neighborhoods in Nashville. Uh, along there with me, I work uh, closely with Watisha Lawless, who is the principal at uh, Napier Elementary School. I work at the community center. Together, we've, we are the hub of that community because there's nothing there. And it's not just the teachers, it is the support staff, it is the bookkeepers, it is the custodians, it is the bus drivers who live in that community and everyone that uplifts that community. We're the ones that do the hard work, yet we are the working poor. That's insane. We put it on the front line every day for this city. We are the ones who made this the it city. Right here, everyone that you see here today, we're the ones that make this the it city, yet no one puts pride and dignity in the work that we do. I hump. I work every day, I work real hard. I get up two hours before I go to work to make sure that the kids and the public that I serve gets everything that they needed. When my day is over with, or should I say when I'm done getting paid, I still work. I'm a, I get up two or three o'clock in the morning getting prepared for the next day. I'm pretty sure you do the same thing for the things that you love. If you don't give us the raises that we need, then you don't care about Nashville's children, you don't care about Nashville's public. It's just that simple. I don't want to hear any ifs, ands, or buts. It just comes down to that. Here I am today having to turn kids away to come at my community center because we don't have the staffing, the adequate staffing to, to watch them in the center. So they're outside in the hot sun in front of the center. Community, the pools are not open because we don't have the staff. It's not that we don't have the staff that is certified because they quit and go work other jobs for higher pay. So we can't open the community, the pools. It's hot. Kids want to swim. Every single last one of you talked about that youth violence was an issue. Who you think is on the front line defending that? That's us. And we can't do that if we can't get the dignity and pay that we need here. We do everything. We support you guys. We support the IT city. We even support things that we fought against. None of us wanted Amazon to come, but here we are being good stewards and letting them come into our city. Yeah, we got to have a big debate on whether we get what we deserve. Come on, y'all. It's time that we do right by the citizens and those of us who've been here give it up every day. Just like they said, whether you give us the raise or not, we're gonna be here doing our job because we're real public service. We're real stewards of this city. And we do that every day. I know all of you want to do the, the, uh, the, the budget raise. Do it. It needs to happen. Support the Mendez and Davis budget. It's been way too long where I've heard a kid say, I want to go to college and be a teacher. I had a kid tell me the other day when we got into a confrontation that I was the greater fool for doing this job because I don't make enough money. That ain't his fault, that's y'all fault. All right, anybody else wishing to speak? Oh, okay. Yes, sir. I'm Ashley King. I live at 21 11th Avenue South. Uh, my telephone number is 
615-829-6171. Ashley King, give me a ring. I'm here on behalf of a young man who attends Kilpatrick Elementary School. He failed. He's in the third grade and failed. His mom came to me and said, you know, my child failed. Fail. Is there anything we can do to possibly have him go to summer school and make up his credits so he can matriculate with his cohort, keep up with his class? We've been looking around for the past two weeks, and there's nothing we can do here in Nashville to help a third grade who failed. There's nothing we can do here in Nashville to help a third grader who failed keep up and make up his summer school. I'm not proud of that. I, I'm ashamed of it, actually. And I hope you are, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? All right. Declare the public hearing closed. Um, before I turn it over to Council Member Vircher, um, members of the Council, um, would you join me in thanking all the people who came out, both for and against this, that took the time to come out and, and speak on, on this matter? Thank you. Councilmember Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval with the re-referral back to budget and finance. All right. So um, I think I got, yeah, I got your budget report before. So I've got a motion to pass on second reading and a re-referral back to budget. Correct. All right. That's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Councilmember Mendes, you're recognized. Thanks. Um, this evening, I'm, I'm not going to get into the merits of it, but just for everybody who came, I want to make sure they understand the process. Um, tonight, uh, second reading is for comments on the budget. Um, we'll hash out what the final budget will be on third reading in two weeks on June 18th. We certainly, um, as the Vice Mayor said, appreciate everybody coming uh, tonight to speak. The substitute budget that um, Councilman Anthony Davis and I have submitted or plan on submitting on third reading is in the amendments package so the public can have access to it now and council members can see it for review. Um, we'll wait till third reading on June 18th to introduce it and we'll distribute more details to council members um, before that meeting comes on the 18th. Um, again, I just want to make sure the process is clear that tonight's for public comment. On the 18th, we'll hash out um, the terms and, and figure out where everybody stands on this. And again, just want to repeat thanks to everybody who came to speak this evening. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Okay, we are on um, BL 2019-1624. Anybody else wishing to speak? All right. Uh, Council Member Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, Mr. Jameson and Vice Mayor and to the administration, just a quick question. Last year I posed uh, the idea of looking at TCRS to manage the pension fund. I know we got a letter uh, stating that they didn't feel like it was a, a good move for them. Uh, yet, upon further review of it this year and, and given the, uh, the amount of money that they've spent um, on fees for that this year, it would now save in, in excess of $35 million. Do we have any uh, latitude in that arena in order to uh, make cuts there, in order to move that, in order to try and fund some of the budget uh, shortfalls that we have, or are we basically our hands tied? I'll have to pull up your letter from last year. I haven't looked at it since then. We'll right. have um, a work session on Thursday and amendment possibilities with third reading on until next week uh, and the possibility of amendments there I'll pull up your letter again and circulate it to council members with your permission. But oh, th you're, you're welcome too. What I, I guess I want to be clear on, on the, the question. Uh, given what TCRS, just the management piece of uh, managing just the money, not changing anything on the pension for the employees, it would save in excess of $35 million. What I'm asking is if we make an amendment to have that savings uh, applied to our budget and the shortfall is there, do we have any latitude in order to make that happen on the floor here? I'll just have to Okay, pull that, that's fine. That I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm asking the uh, question properly. Thank All you, right. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Bedney. Can I ask uh, Council Member Glover a question? Is, uh, is, ask it to me and then I can direct is, it to you. Is that $35 million in one year? All right. Council Member Glover, do you want to answer that question? Hold on. 
There we go. Yes, sir, it would be. That's an annual savings right there uh, because of the cost basis. I don't want to get into a lot of details. I'd be glad to do it off offline with you. But the uh, cost basis that we're paying uh, for the for the services out of New York on the managing of the money versus what TCRS charges, um, it's, it's, it's 104 basis points roughly that we're paying in New York. It'd be 22 basis points here. That's a savings of 30 to 35 million every year. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Bedney, this came up, I re remember, last year, and we'll let Mr. Jamison um, pull the letter and he can get back to everybody on those questions. Yeah, well, thank you, Council Member Glover, for bringing that up. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Any other questions? All right. We're on BL 2019-1624 on second reading. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no. You adopt. Uh, Council Member Virtue, I'm going to come back to you for just a minute. If you would remind while we got the budget in, well, as we passed the budget on second reading, there is a work session. If you can just remind the council members when that is. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, we will have our work session. That is this Thursday, um, June 6th at 4.30 p.m. here in the council chambers. Would encourage all budget and finance committee members and council members, if you haven't had the opportunity to go out and review the SharePoint, you will see um, that's our repository for communications with respective departments and answers as it relates to budgetary questions. Uh, we will begin promptly on Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Um, here in the council chambers. All right, thank you, council member. Okay, we are now ready to go on to uh, bills on third reading and public hearing. We have one matter that has been specially set. This is substitute bill BL 2018-1413 by council member Scott Davis was disapproved by the Planning Commission. Uh, let, me, uh, let me read it, and then we're going to have to have slides. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws uh, by changing from RS5 to RM20 zoning on property located at 927 Douglas Avenue, 285 feet east of Emmett Avenue, 0.33 acres. Uh, Council Member Scott Davis. Sorry, Vice Mayor, I'm just, so you can see the hands of support, I'm waiting until some of the crowd clears. That's okay, we, we can uh, go ahead and see the slides if that's okay. Council Member Davis, you ready to go? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the Planning Commission um, because this is a disapproved bill. This is a request to rezone property located at 927 Douglas Avenue. The request is to rezone the property from RS5, residential single family, to RM20, residential multifamily. The Planning Commission recommendation was to disapprove the RM20 and approve R6A. The existing zoning is RS5, which is residential single family, 5,000 square foot minimum lot size. The property is located on the north side of Douglas Avenue, west of Gallatin Avenue. The land use policy for the property is primarily T4 urban neighborhood evolving um, with just a bit of conservation on the rear part of the site. Neighborhood evolving policy is intended to create and enhance urban residential neighborhoods. Um, while some change is expected, um, it does take into consideration the timing of development uh, as well as the block structure. The Planning Commission recommended disapproval of the RM20A based on several factors. The um, size and configuration of the lot, it being a relatively narrow, long lot, um, means that development of this intensity, um, if it were replicated along the remainder of the block, could result in uh, a many, many driveways um, along this portion of the block, um, and it would be inconsistent with the existing development pattern. Uh, the Planning Commission felt at, that a minor increase in intensity to an R6A was most appropriate on this site given the site constraints in regards to um, access. So therefore, the Planning Commission recommended disapproval of RM20 and approval of R6A. All right, thank you. Um, before I go back to Councilmember uh, Davis, this matter has been up on, this is the second time we've had a public hearing on this. So I'm going to turn to Mr. Jamison just real quick to make sure that we're clear why we're here, and then I'll go to Council Member Scott Davis. Mr. Jamison. Uh, so the applicant was originally seeking RM20 zoning. Planning could not approve that and, uh, however, uh, volunteered to prepare the ordinance for 
R6A. That was submitted, a public hearing was held in January on the zoning to R6A and passed. Uh, the bill was since deferred uh, three times over three separate months in January, February, and March when a substitute was introduced on March 19th that converted it to RM20 that was deferred to May and then through an administrative error, not through the fault of the council member or the applicant, uh, notices did not go out so it had to be deferred. Because there's no public hearing in June otherwise, the council member and the vice mayor agreed to conduct this special hearing, uh, public hearing, so that the bill can proceed. Uh, notices have been sent out. There's no need to suspend the rules because it is the vice mayor's authority to schedule a special meeting when circumstances warrant. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jamison. Um, council member Scott Davis, you're recognized. Thank you, vice mayor. I'd like to uh, open the public hearing, please. All right, um, I am uh, call for the um, uh, the public hearing. I'd like to see a show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, thank you. Show of hands who are here in opposition to this measure. All right, seeing none in opposition, those in favor wish to speak? Yes. All right. And we're having, the even though there's no one in opposition, there was no one in opposition at planning, and there was no one in opposition last time. But since, you know, people forget, we all have, do a lot, we're all busy, so forgive me, but we're gonna have the supporters who live in my district speak in support of this project. All thank right. you. Thank you, council member. Okay, so um, you're gonna have three minutes to speak. Um, if you will identify yourself and um, uh, give us your address, and then you've got three minutes. Good evening, Metro Council and Vice Mayor. Thank you for having me. My name is Kimberly Tucker, and I'm the co-applicant for this rezone. I live at 512 North 2nd Street, and I've lived in East Nashville basically my whole life. I purchased 927 Avenue, North, uh, Douglas Avenue, as investment property for my retirement. Both my sons are college graduates and now live in Bordeaux. That leaves me an empty nester. So now it's my time to work on my retirement plan. This is my third attempt to have this property rezoned, so again, thank you for having me. My question is, with a quarter of an acre lot, why have I only been recommended one additional house? I'm requesting an RM20 zoning because of the lot size, the location, and because Douglas is considered an up and coming area by Nashville Next Community Manual. I'm not asking for anything above what's already coming. Just ride down Douglas and you can see all the homes, the condos, and the apartments being built. I've been told the drawbacks to my lot are, there's a creek in the back, there's no alley access, the lot is too thin for a fire truck, and they don't want to vote for gigantic homes being built next to smaller family homes. 2408 Inga, 2410, 2422, 2423, 2425, 2503 Inga. All these were allowed three to four homes, more than mine on smaller lots. None have alleys, Four have creeks in the back, and two have the railroad tracks in the back. None have room for a fire truck. These are all gigantic houses, all in the neighborhood, amongst small, uh, small residential homes. If my lot is too skinny, just do what 2A, B, C, and D Fern Avenue do, did. Turn it to the side and just make it fit. Or do like Young's Fashion did on Gallatin Road. They turned theirs to the side and made it fit. I have letters voting yes from neighbors. I've had no opposition from any neighbors. Others are allowed to build more than one house having the same obstacles. Douglas needs density. It's written in Nashville Next. I bought this as an investment for my retirement. Outsiders and new residents are allowed to come in and participate in our economic boom. Why not let a Nashville native, long-term resident of uh, District 5 do the same? I ask you to vote yes for my uh, retirement. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? My name is Honey Russell. I don't live in the district, but I am a, a fellow supporter of African Americans buying investment property that live in Nashville. My address is 1217 Bryan Street. And it appears that if this is going on in this district, the only issue is that she is an African-American woman 
and you don't want to support her. I'm just going to put it out there. Because she is giving you evidence that other people are doing exactly the same thing that she wants to do. I don't see why you won't support it. Unless it is simply the fact that she is an African-American woman. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Good evening, Vice Mayor, Council Members. My name is Steve Smith. I live at 816 Walden Way, District 12 of Brother Steve Glover. Hey, Amen. Uh, first and foremost, I love the beginning of your session, and I don't know how this works, but I know whenever we pray to the Holy Father, I don't know why we can't say in Jesus' name, but anyway, I want to bring that up. Uh, and then, too, respectfully speaking, we've been here multiple times, and I was under the impression that we were going to be the only ones for this special agenda, and even though this other bill was very important, I believe in educate, educating our children because I was one of eight kids uh, to, uh, and the first one to get a college education. It makes a difference. My little sister and I, we've lived in East Nash for all our life, from Ewan Park to Maplewood to Bailey, Cora Howe. I love Channel 5, and I know Channel 5 has this marketing theme that says Nashville is a city on the rise. And it is for a small segment, but for a larger segment that's not wealthy and well-connected, it's a city on the fall. And my sister, who raised my two nephews by herself, and none of us, even though people need food assistance and social programs, we fought and scratched to get our education and to change our genealogy from where it began, from literally nothing. And what she said is true. If you go out to East Nashville, where we grew up, a lot of people were not preparing for that. And now all of these businesses have forced the impoverished people out. And what she's requesting is no different than what's already being done. Even on my old street of, of Branch Street where I moved. And so I'm just asking, if you can't do this, for a woman, for a citizen that's been here prior to all this building boom, then who can you do it for? I please ask that you allow this to pass. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? De declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Davis, you're recognized. I understand. I'm glad that slide's still up. Over 100 units right next door to this property. Her neighbors are in support. There's nobody in opposition. This bill has been publicized several times. No one in opposition at planning. First public hearing, no one in opposition. Why? Because it makes sense. And 99% of my bills, I have a lot of them, get approved by the staff. This one didn't, didn't get approved by the Planning Commission. However, though, who do I work for? My constituents. And when I have a bill that my constituents are in support of and no opposition, and I'm sorry that we had to have people speak, but just wanted to be clear, once again, no opposition. And you've seen some of the people, usually the same four that will come and speak against everything. When you see this, and you see just the average Nashvilleian trying to make their lives better, let them participate. And if you're gonna vote against this because, don't vote against this because 
you don't agree with me or you don't like me. It's not about me. It's about that single woman that works for Metro, member of the SEIU, that needs this to happen. Let's really be the it city. Let's do what's right. And I just want to thank everybody for their support. And I'm more than willing to answer any questions. I know the queue is about to light up. Thank right. you. Thank you. Councilmember Hastings, you're recognized. Yes, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just wanted to uh, allow the councilman my, my time. Thank you. Councilmember Davis, I thought you were finished. Well, I was, but okay. thank you. All right. Councilmember Hager, you're recognized. Um, I need to ask the uh, councilman if this is the one that we did the amendment for the STRs or not. No, sir. That one had opposition. This is no opposition. This is what? No, sir. It's not. This one. That one had no. That one had opposition. This one has no opposition. Okay. Right. What about STRs? Are they going to be allowed? Well, no. with this, with the RM, yeah. But, but there's a bill restricting that coming up. When? So uh, hold on. Let's get this uh, oh, well. uh, in, instead of a free flow of information. Councilmember Hager, um, go ahead and ask your question, and then I'll redirect it over to Councilmember. My Member question Hager. is: is is this one of those where they're going to allow short-term rentals, non, non, let's see, non-owner occupied? Yes Councilmember no? Davis, can you answer that question? All right. Yes, and I have one thing to add, though, Councilman Hager. Um, as you know, one of our colleagues, or a couple of them, have submitted a bill to get rid of short-term rentals in RM20s, and by the time when that passes. This, this bill will not, the construction will not be done, so they won't qualify for that if that bill does pass through planning and the council staff, too. I don't think I totally agree with that. If it's already vested and they start building and they already go get a permit and we don't have that bill passed, they're going to have non-owner occupied. So, uh, Council Member Hager, is that another question back for Council Member Davis? Well, that's, that's my question. Is he going to amend this to disallow non-owner occupied STRs. Right. Yes or no? Council Member Davis, uh, you're recognized. It is, on, it, is, it, is, it is on third right now, Councilman. Yes, sir. So uh, back this way. I apologize, Vice Mayor. That's all right. <laughs> Council Member Davis, you're recognized for an answer. At this, at, this, at this time, you know, I'm willing. Actually, at this time, I'm willing. To, it's late. And I wish I could do it for because I admire Councilman Haker, but the show's got to go on. She's been waiting long enough. And the purpose of this bill is not for her to do short-term rentals. She has two sons, and, and you know, they're trying to take advantage and help possibly build some houses for them and some other, and some other people, some real affordable. So I'm fine with it. I mean, let's keep it as is. I apologize, Councilman Haker, but let's let it roll on. All right. Councilmember Hager, any additional questions? I move to defer one meeting and see if he can amend it. So I got a motion to defer. He can defer it. I understand. All right. So I've got a motion to defer. Is there a second? I got a second. So um, I've got a motion to defer. Uh, this is a bill on third reading. So a uh, motion to defer, properly seconded. Uh, discussion on the motion to defer. I've got people in the queue. Um, let me go back to Council Member Davis first. Okay, um, Council Member Davis. If the gentleman for Hickory withdraws his motion, I will do the motion myself. But the problem is it's a mandatory referral back to planning. That's the issue. We can't do that. Do we, planning, do we have time for the January, for, I'm sorry, excuse me, for the yes. June 27th meeting? So um, let me refer to uh, the planning uh, department or to Mr. Jamison. Yep. But the, I'm trying to do some calculations. If you can just give me a moment. All right. So we're checking. If there's an STRP restriction, I, it'll have to be an SP. It'll have to go back to planning. Do you want to answer that? So uh, I'm, while we're looking for the dates, I'm going to turn to Mr. Jamison um, for an explanation about what the proposed amendment might do in the time frame. 
Mr. Jameson. So non-owner occupied STRPs would be allowed in RM zoning. So if there's an effort to restrict short-term rentals, it would have to be by SP zoning. The council rules 21 allow that conversion on third reading to an SP, but it has to be re-referred back to the planning commission. And so the question before you now that I think Ms. Milligan is looking at is whether or not there is just time left in this term to get it back before the planning commission and then back before you before the term ends. All right, while we're waiting, I'm gonna to go to uh, Council Member Withers. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, and this is, I hope that's okay, but I, I was not planning on speaking on the motion to defer. All right, um, anybody else wishing to speak on the motion to defer at this moment? Council Member Hastings, you're recognized. Yes, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just wanted to ask uh, Mr. Jamison, is it okay, could he do actually an amendment uh, on top of this right now on third reading? Could he offer up an amendment for the short-term rental so part? That, with, with base zoning, you don't have use restrictions. For example, you couldn't do a use restriction with RM20 that prohibited STRPs. You'd have to do that through an SP and by the council rules that has to go back to planning commission. Now what he could do is offer the substitute SP and move to suspend the rules after a deferral and have it not go back to the planning commission. And this body and this body alone consider an, S, an SP that eliminates the STRPs on third reading converted to SP zoning. Thank you. All right, thank you. So we are on a motion to defer. It is properly seconded. Any further discussion on the motion to defer? Council Member Glover, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Mr. Jamison, I was trying to follow this as we were moving back and forth in this. So it's not the deferral that will automatically move it back to planning. It would be any amendments he may try to do to it. Right. The so if we if we ask for a deferral, and this is what I'm I'm wanting to make sure I understand. So if we if we pass a deferral tonight and he comes back with an SP that that does not allow STRPs, as long as everyone is in agreement to, given that, that the neighborhood is in favor of this, if no one is in opposition to suspending the rules, then he would be able to do that without taking it back to planning? Correct, it's rule okay. 21 that requires the re-referral to the planning commission. Okay, I just, wanna, I, I just wanted to make sure on, if we voted to defer it, that wouldn't automatically kick it back because I thought I heard some of that at first, but I was just trying to make sure I had clarity. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, thank you again. We're on the motion to defer uh, one meeting. Uh, that would be to um, actually June the 18th. Correct. Um, further discussion on the deferral We've still got people in the queue. Anybody wishing to speak on the deferral? All right, so we are on, the, on a motion to defer to June the 18th. We're voting on the motion to defer. Um, if you're for the motion, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. no. I think the ayes have it. Motion is deferred to June the 18th, All right? So going on, we are now ready for the uh, consent agenda. Um, consent agenda resolutions, both consent and uh, resolutions that we'll have to take up separately. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the list as I normally do, and I'm going to tell you which ones are on the consent agenda. Uh, if you need to bump something off, if you'll let me know. Um, these are the items on the consent agenda. I've got resolution RS 2019-1727, and then RS 2019-1754 all the way through RS 2019-1770. Okay, let me repeat that. RS 2019-1754, all the way through RS 2019-1770. And then I've got RS 2019-1774, 1775, 1776, and 1777. Those are the items on the consent agenda. Does anything need to be bumped off the consent agenda? Seeing nobody in the queue, I am gonna start reading those items. Uh, these are items, again, on the consent agenda. 
RS 2019-1727 by Council Member Withers, resolution exempting Chopper LLC located at 1100 BNC Stratton Avenue from the minimum distance requirement for obtaining a beer permit pursuant to section 7.08.090.E of the Metropolitan Code. Resolution RS 2019-1754 by Council Member Vercher, resolution accepting grant from the State of Tennessee from the Administrative Office of the Courts to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County for the provision of interpretation, translation services for court hearings which involve parties with limited English proficiency in the Davidson County Trial Courts. Resolution RS 2019-1755 by Vercher, resolution accepting a grant from the State of Tennessee, Administrative Office of the Courts to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County acting by and through the Davidson County Juvenile Court for the provision of interpreter translation services for individuals with limited English proficiency. I'm on RS 17, um, uh, RS 2019-1756 by virtue. I guess my time is up. Approves a grant from Oasis Center, Inc. to the Davidson County Juvenile Court for the implementation of the Wyman's Team Outreach Program. It's part of the probation services to decrease risky behaviors and increase life skills among youth. Resolution RS 2019-1757 by Vercher. Approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Children's Services to the Davidson County Juvenile Court to provide state supplemental juvenile court improvement funds to employ a youth services officer. RS 2019-1758 by Vercher. Authorize the Department of Law Compromise and settlement the property damage claim of Desmond Pringle against Metropolitan Government in the amount of $22,938.36. RS 319-1759 by Council Member Vercher authorizes the Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Ivory Harbison against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $7,000. RS 319-1760 by Council Member Vercher authorizes the Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Amanda Gregory against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $53,000. $3,250. RS 319-1761 by Council Member Vercher in Gilmore. Proves an amendment to a grant from the Greater National Regional Council to the Metro Social Services Commission to provide nutrition, home, and community-based services to eligible seniors throughout Davidson County. RS 319-1762 by Vercher in Gilmore. Approves a letter of agreement to Tennessee Breast and Cervical Screening Program and the Metro Board of Health for reimbursement of cervical cancer screenings. RS 319-1763, Virtue and Gilmore approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Human Services to the Metro Board of Health to conduct immunization record uh, audits for child care centers, drop-in centers, and group child, group child care homes to ensure the safety and well-being of children and families in Davidson County. RS 319-1764 by Virtue and Gilmore approves a grant from the Friends of Metro Animal Care and Control to the Metro Board of Health to provide additional free microchips for animals that are adopted at the shelter. RS 319-1765, Virtue and Gilmore approves an amendment to a grant for the United States Environmental Protection Agency to the Metro Board of Health for the ongoing collection of data on ambient air concentrations in Nashville, Tennessee. RS 319-1766 by Council Member Gilmore approves an amendment to a grant contract from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to improve the health of those residing in or visiting Davidson County through targeted strategies to prevent and control the use of tobacco products. RS 2019-1767 by Council Member Gilmore approves an amendment to a grant from the Greater National Regional Council to the Metro so Social Services Commission to provide meals that meet RDA nutritional guidelines and transportation services to eligible seniors and handicapped residents. RS 2019-1768, Virtue, Syracuse, and Gilmore approves a grant for the Nashville Public Library Foundation to the Nashville Public Library to partially fund a project coordinator position for the NASA Youth Level Outcomes Framework Research Initiative, RS 2019-1769, Kendall, Virtue, and others approves a grant for the Nashville Parks Foundation to the Metro Parks and Recreation Department to provide supplemental funding from private donations for the development of Frankie Pierce Park. RS 2019-1770 by Withers, Virtue, and Syracuse. Approves a grant from the Friends of Shelby Park and Bottoms to the Metro Board of Parks and Recreation to support the playground project at Cornelia Fort Airport. Uh, RS 2019-1774 by Virtue and Roberts. Approves a contract between the Metropolitan Government and Oklahoma State University to provide 
IFSTA training materials in print and digital form to the National Fire Department. RS 319-1775 of Virtue and Roberts approves a DNA capacity enhancement grant for the United States Department of Justice to the Metropolitan Police Department for the purchase of DNA laboratory processing software. RS 319-1776, Council Member O'Connell classifies public roads in Davidson County, Tennessee. And Resolution RS 2019-1777, by Council Member Bedney and O'Connell, authorized the Metropolitan Department of Water, Metro Water Services to enter into an interlocal agreement with the Nolansville College Grove Utility District to transfer from Metro to District the right to provide water services to par property partially in both Williamson County and Davidson County. Those are the matters on the consent agenda. Does anything need to come off? Can't recognize people from the back. Anything need to come off the agenda? Off the consent agenda. All right. If not, we are on, um, I'm going to start calling on the chairman. Uh, Council Member Virtue, you're recognized for budget and finance. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. On RS 2019-1754 through RS 2019-1770, budget and finance recommended approval, 14-4-0 against. And on RS 2019, 1774 and 1775, budget and finance recommended approval, 1440 against. Thank you, Council Member Virtue. Council did, you, did you want me to itemize all of them out, or was that? No, that's, okay. <laughs> that's good enough. Council Member Gilmore, you're recognized for health and hospitals. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would just like to thank all the committee members. We had a full committee tonight. So, um, Resolution 2019-1767, uh, 6 4 0 against, 0 not voting, was recommended for approval. Resolution 2019-1762, 7 4 uh, 0 against, 0 not voting, recommended for approval. Resolution 1763, 7 4 none against, none not voted, was recommended for approval. 1764, 7 4 0 against, 0 not voting, was recommended for approval. Resolution 1765, 740 against, zero not voting. It was recommended for approval. Resolution 1767, 840 against, zero not voting. was recommended for approval. Resolution 1767, 840 against, zero not voting. It was recommended for approval. Resi resolution 1768, 840 against, zero not voting. It was recommended for approval. All right. Thank you, Council Member Gilmore. Council Member Syracuse, Parks and Library. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Resolutions 2019, 1768 and 1769. The committee voted uh, six and four, zero against. And on 1770, seven, four, zero against. A little extra support. Thank you, Council Member Syracuse. Council Member Roberts, uh, Public Safety. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public safety voted four in favor, zero against for resolution 1773, 1774, and 1775. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized for public works. Thank you, Mr. President. Am I I'm correct that uh, RS 2019 1743 was not on the consent agenda, correct? That's correct. Okay, then we, uh, we considered RS 2019 1776, uh, very independent. Uh, consideration and we voted eight in favor, zero against. Uh, RS 2019-1777, eight in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member O'Connell. And I'm looking for Council Member uh, Lee for the Rules Committee report. Oh, okay. So that would be Council Member Haywood, you're recognized. At that time, I think all the committee reports are in, and I would like to move to approve all resolutions on the consent agenda. All right, so I got a motion to approve all the items on the consent agenda, properly seconded. All right. So I got a motion and a second to approve all the matters on the consent agenda. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Um, consent agenda is passed. Okay, now, so now we're gonna back up and we'll go through 
items that are on resolutions that were not on the consent agenda. First one is uh, resolution RS 2019 1721 by Council Member Vercher, Mina Johnson, and Murphy. Uh, resolution requesting the Metropolitan Planning Commission and the Metropolitan Planning Department amend Chapter 2 of the adopted subdivision regulations of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to require community meetings prior to approval of concept plans or prior to approval of final plats when no concept plan is required. Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. I'd like the uh, committee report. All right. Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. The committee uh, recommended approval of the substitute and then recommended a one meeting deferral, 11 4 0 against. All right, back to you, Council Member Virtue. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like I, to move forward. I'm sorry. Uh, and the committee also recommended to approve a substitute. I apologize. I approve the substitute and then a deferral of one meeting? It, yes. Just wanted to clarify. Okay. All right, did I get that right, though? You, the, the committee approved the substitute. But then there was also a recommendation for the committee that there be de a deferral of one meeting. Yeah, the committee wanted to hear from Council Lady Bircher, and okay. so they wanted to defer one meeting to bring her, give her a chance to come and talk about her uh, legislation. All right, thank you, Council Member Bedney. Back to you, Council Member Thank Bircher. you, Vice Mayor. I move for uh, one meeting deferral. Okay. Uh, there's been a motion to, um, to defer one meeting until June the 18th. Okay, properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I just want to make sure, do we need to specifically say we're going to re-refer that to the Planning Zoning Historical Committee? Council Member Virtue, is that okay? Yeah, that, that's fine. All right. So it's a, it's a motion to defer uh, one meeting until June the 18th. Do I need to go ahead and move the substitute, Vice Mayor? Uh, you can move the substitute or you can wait, whatever okay. you want to do. Okay. Okay. We can, we can wait. All right. So uh, it's to defer um, to uh, actually June the 18th. Uh, and re-refer back to planning and zoning. Okay, that's the motion, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed no, you adopt. Thank you, thank you Council Member Allen for that. All right, resolution RS 2019-1725 by Council Members Vircher and Roten. Uh, resolution appropriating to certain accounts to the benefit of the Davidson County Sheriff's Office, State Fair, Industrial Development Board, Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency, GSD General Purposes Debt Service Fund, the GSD School Purposes Debt Service Fund, USD General Purposes Debt Service Fund, Community Oversight Board and Municipal Auditorium, $20,090,300 and reducing appropriations for the GSD School Purposes Debt Service Fund in the amount of $550,000. Councilmember Virtue, you are recognized. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Mayor. Um, there was extensive uh, conversation as it relates to this supplemental yesterday in budget and finance. Um, budget and finance recommended approval, 10-4, one against, and one abstention. And with that, I'll move for approval. Okay. Um, I've got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Council Member Allen? You're nothing? Okay. Uh, Council Member Glover, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just very quickly, I'm not going to rehash what we talked about in the committee yesterday. But I think uh, what we heard yesterday in budget and finance only emphasizes and actually amplifies why we need to be cautious on what we do on this floor sometimes. We spend millions and millions of dollars without understanding sometimes the impact of it. Look, I think we, we all know this has to pass. The money's basically been, been spent. But we, we heard uh, yesterday that deferring at one more meeting to, to come in and have a little further discussion would not hinder bills uh, from being paid. So with that, I'm going to vote no uh, on it tonight because I, I think that's one of our problems. We rush too quickly <coughs> when we're literally spending millions upon millions of dollars without fully understanding the, the impact that it has on our overall budget. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Council Member Glover. Council Member Weiner, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'd like to ask a question of the Finance Department. All right. Go ahead. How long have, has this information been out at our, for our access to be reviewed? Uh, the supplemental was filed with the uh, budget on May 1st. Okay. So we've had about five weeks, right? Yes. Okay. And um, this is something, monies that we've already spent that have been previously approved by this body, right? No, the, uh, what is before you now is asking for that approval to appropriate uh, those funds. Okay, however, as in the case of the Bellevue TIF, 
Right, that would have been uh, authorized and approved through other legislation for us to uh, commit okay. to that test. Okay. So given the fact that we've had this for over a month now, um, I'm going to support moving this forward because we have bigger fish to fry. We've got to spend time studying the upcoming budget and make a decision about how we're going to move this city forward. And I think for us to um, delay this and pile more on when we have, as I shared, more important things to do, I think it's time to just take care of business. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Back to you, Council Member Glover. You're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Look, there's no doubt in my mind we're going to go ahead and pass this tonight, but I think it's critical that we understand that the administration a year ago, plus a year ago, built in $17 million or $15 million on the sale of parking meters. And, we, you know, that was in the budget. We didn't fully understand that. And that was kind of my point yesterday. If you go back and you listen to the, the questioning that we did, that's really the issue of what I'm saying. I, that, there's no doubt in my mind that, that we're going to go ahead and pass this. We've spent the money. But one of the reasons we're in this, uh, this situation is because in the budget from last year, we were counting on money of a sale before this body had agreed to vote and, and agreed to that sale. So that's really the point I'm making more than anything else is before we, are, before we rush to judgment or, or rush to say, well, how long have we had this? Okay, five weeks. We had the $17 million on the parking meters uh, for over a year. Question is, it, do we really know where, what we're looking at inside of that budget to fully comprehend and understand it? That's my point. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I also moved a deferral of this uh, in budget and finance after we had a, uh, a long discussion about this. And uh, I, I wanted to ask uh, Director Lode Max O'Neill, uh, I know the Council typically considers a, a supplemental uh, appropriation uh, each spring. Uh, can you share with us what the amount of that uh, appropriation has been typically in past springs around this time? Uh, uh, Council, Council Member, uh, I, I've been here for 19 years, and I have seen years when there was no supplementals. Okay. And I have seen years where we bought forward um, a like amount of this supplemental just for Metro General Hospital. So, um, um, I mean, that's the range in there. I think um, probably the highest that I've seen has probably been a little over $20 million. I appreciate that. And so to Council Lady Weiner's point about this uh, being filed uh, along with the budget, uh, is there a reason that those were filed at the same time? I see from our analysis that this resolution was introduced May 21st but was deferred to track with the operating budget. And I think that was somewhat my point yesterday in budget and finance, understanding the landscape of our debt and our debt service and the implications uh, from last budget to this budget uh, to the upcoming budget. And uh, so can you speak to uh, why it was filed when it was filed and why it was deferred to track with the operating budget, but that we need to hurry up and pass it? tonight. Uh, in terms of when it was filed, we just think that um, it's easier to bring a package of legislation that's budget related to this body at the same time so that you consider all of those matters at the same time. So you so are that saying you, that they are related and they should all be considered right. at the same time. Yeah. So, so colleagues, generally. that that is why uh, I did move uh, to defer this one meeting uh, for our additional consideration in the context of the larger uh, budget. Um, Council member, let me go back to the director, make sure she had finished her statement. I appreciate we, that. Thank yeah. you. Director. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, we do that out of uh, respect for this body, but t typically if you do go back and you look at that history in terms of the approvals for supplemental resolutions, those historically have not been deferred. Um, by this body, uh, I have found that the council will go ahead and take action on the supplemental uh, in advance of consideration of the operating budget ordinance. And Vice Mayor or Mr. Jameson, if we were to defer this one meeting, we would still be then taking action on it before the budget, correct? Mr. Jameson. That is correct. Um, 
Okay, I guess my questions that were, uh, and, and I appreciate uh, the response uh, via email to me uh, after budget and finance, but uh, uh, Director or Mr. McGuire, can you all speak specifically to the $15 million in debt service uh, that are reflected uh, here in this supplemental and uh, just put that in context, uh, why it is here now in, in this supplemental um, uh, just so for, for the public's understanding, please. Director. Okay, in terms of the uh, debt service budget, we had budgeted $15 million of revenue in the debt service funds for the current fiscal year. Because that, that uh, deal is still in process. What deal is that, Director? Uh, the, um, the procurement process for the parking. So I, know this that that, I know that that legislation has been deferred but because that, um, go ahead, go ahead and finish. Okay, so we can because get that had not been approved, and we did not think that that would be executed by June 30. In order to have those funds balanced, uh, we had to we have to transfer revenue from other uh, funds and the fund balances to cover the debt service funds, so that those funds are balanced as required by state law. So what we are doing is, is transferring the availability of those funds from uh, the um, fund balances so that we are in compliance with state law. I guess in response to that, Vice Mayor, I would just uh, remind colleagues then that this consideration and this resolution is inextricably related to the operational budget process in which we are in the midst. Um, and I don't know if... A Colleague might extend me a little extra time, but yeah, All right. thank you. Thank you, Council Member. I'm going to go to Council Member Mina Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I do apologize if this uh, question or conversation took uh, yesterday's budget hearing. Uh, I was unable to uh, watch it. Uh, so my question is uh, this uh, supplemental uh, request. So I'm assuming it will uh, be needed uh, before end of this term, so we are talking about about uh, twenty something days. Is there any of these uh, can be deferred to the next budget cycle, or does it need to be all spent during before the uh, June 30, 30 years? Uh, the money has already been spent, and it, so the action cannot be deferred, or we will be out of compliance with uh, state law regarding uh, having a balanced budget. So this money was already spent, not uh, allocated or future spending between now and uh, 30th. It's just spent and uh, need to put on the books. Exactly. Uh, in terms of, for example, the first item on the list is the sheriff's office. I think um, uh, and the sheriff's uh, office had a representative here last night speaking to the items that um, uh, caused their overage. And, and that includes salaries and other protective equipment and things having to cover costs that are being incurred in the sheriff's office. Well, those functions are, are happening today because the sheriff needs to provide public safety services and to make sure that those facilities are secure. And I mean, the government could say, well, we're not gonna write a check because uh, the appropriation isn't there, but it's more important to make sure that we have adequate public safety in those facilities and that they have the resources they need to continue operations. Thank you, Director. Uh, so in that sense, so it was kind of unexpected, rather little over budget item, and we have to supplement to uh, kind of balance the budget in a way. So is, this, uh, is it fair to say this uh, appropriate amount is over uh, budgeted, so we kind of go over the uh, this year's budget. What the supplemental is doing is uh, we are currently over budget. This is uh, providing us the authorization so that we are then in balance and we are no longer over budget with this approval. Thank you for the explanation. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Yield to Council Lady Henderson. All right. Council Member Henderson. So, Director uh, Lynn Max O'Neill, I know in budget and finance, uh, we had sheriff's office, state fair, uh, community oversight board uh, share with us that if we were to defer this one meeting, there would be no negative impact to uh, 
their work that they do or the budget that they do um, uh, or the budgeting that they are doing at this juncture. Um, can you explain to the public, please, when you say that this money is already spent, what does that mean then that it is before us um, at this juncture for our approval if it's already been spent? I wonder if you could just explain that for the public's edification, please. All right, Director. Um, in terms of um, uh, the Sheriff's Office, they, um, I'll just use that one as, um, well, maybe, maybe a better example is the Community Oversight Board. Can I give that one to you as an example? Is that okay? Sure, I appreciate that. If, okay. if you would as well, I think there are the smaller expenditures about which I don't think anybody in this body would quibble. Um, I think we're also wanting to understand separately uh, the, the, the 15 million in debt service that was going to be covered by the parking procurement that has now been pressed pause. So if you want to address the Sheriff's Office, the State Fair Subsidy and Community Oversight individually or otherwise, I, I don't think for the most part that that is the part with which people are, are seeking more understanding, but please do feel free. All right, Director. I, I think I would like to just address the uh, Community Oversight Board because that is one that I think um, uh, would resonate with um, with this body. And if you recall, a, um, a referendum passed authorizing the creation of that board. Within that referendum, it said there shall be allocated up to $1.5 million to staff and operate the functions of that board. When that referendum passed, this body had not approved an appropriation for that $1.5 million. So while the referendum um, authorized up to $1.5 million, we have to come back to this body to receive authorization for an appropriation of those funds. So in terms of that one as an example, this, this um, supplemental appropriation is providing that authorization which is required in addition to the passage of the referendum. And I think I got that right, Director Cooper, from a legal perspective. In terms of the debt, okay, the debt is not a new expense. The debt uh, expenditure budget was set in the operating budget ordinance as approved by this body. The amount, what we are doing is we are transferring revenue appropriations into the fund to cover those debt service uh, uh, requirements that are needed this fiscal year. This is not a new expense, so you are not authorizing the addition of additional debt service payments or anything of that nature. You are just authorizing the use of fund balance to cover those debt service payments. I appreciate that. And then can you just explain one more time why that is then needed in relation to the parking procurement specifically? It is because when we, when the, when we present a budget to this body, we have revenue estimates for each of the operating funds and each of the debt service funds. And we had estimated revenue from the parking project into those debt service funds, which will not be effectuated this fiscal year. So what we are doing is allocating revenue from the journal fund balances of those other operating funds into those debt service funds so that those debt service funds are balanced. Again, this is not a, it's not a new expense. It's not a duplication of any revenue. It is not a change in any revenue assumptions. It's use of fund balances from across those other funds. That's why you see these accounts listed and the transfers coming in. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Murphy. I just, um, I was going to share some of my time if the council lady still needed some, but I, I will say that this is something that when I first looked at it, I thought it was your typical 4% fund. And then I'm hearing a lot of different things tonight that kind of concern me. The fact that we are, it, it sounds like we have spent money based on the administration banking on this body, passing legislation that we were not aware of yet. That is extremely shocking to me. Um, it's, it's, I guess, borderline, not just borderline. It is offensive to me. Um, I, I don't think, I think that we've really got to buckle this down for the rest of this term. And those of us who are coming back 
um, for the next four years and those of us joining us for the next four years, I just, I'm shocked to find out how much money is being spent prior to this body authorizing it. And I know you can package it up and put a ribbon on it and call it a lot of different things um, because I, I work in the world where you package things like that, but, but this is just a little shocking to me and I feel that we need to be more responsible fiscally and we need to be more aware when the administration is banking on money um, that I think a lot of us didn't realize was gonna come about in this way. And so I feel extremely misled on this um, and a lot of misleading things that have come out in this budget. And, and um, I know that I'm gonna be out of town for um, a council trip over the next couple days. And I just really hope that this council um, can spend the time to get some of our house in order and, and sort these things out. And I appreciate Council Lady Henderson doing this work uh, because I know that she catches flack sometimes for asking difficult questions, but I am glad that she is doing it for us. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Mendez. Thanks. Um, well, I think uh, I'm on record of being as uh, critical as a person could be of how we do the operating budget. Um, but on this, um, the reality is that, especially for the 15 million on the debt, uh, we did approve it. We approved the expenditure a year ago in the operating budget, and and all all the administration done is has done is spent the money that was approved, the expenditures that were approved in the budget last year on especially that 15 million, and all that's happened is revenue has come up short. And instead of selling the boat to pay for that 15 million, we're going to hit the savings account to pay for the 15 million, and and that's that's all that's going on here. Um, the expenditures are exactly what were approved in the budget last year. And so I would love to jump on the bandwagon and, and try to make some hay for the budget I'm gonna propose in a couple weeks. Um, but really, I think this, this, is, this is fine and it's the spending. It has been spent, but it was approved by us last year in the budget. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Pridemore. Previous question. All right, previous, been, previous question's been called for. Um, we're voting on the previous question. All in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. So we are now voting on resolution RS 2019-1725. Um, there is gonna be, we're gonna have to go on the board for this because there's gonna be a negative, at least, a, at least I know of a negative vote. So uh, Madam Clerk, uh, we are voting on RS 2019-1725. If you will open up the machine. Right, Madam Clerk, uh, if you will close the machines and take the vote. 31 in favor, two against, three abstentions. All right, resolution RS 2019, 1725 passes. All right, thank you. All right, we are on uh, resolution RS 2019, 1726 by Virtue and Roten, authorize the issuance of $454,100,000 uh, $100, in interfund tax anticipation notes for the Metropolitan Government. Councilmember Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended um, a one meeting deferral, 1440 against to track with the budget. Um, just wanna remind Budget and Finance Committee members and council members, this is pursuant state law, what we're doing here. Um, and I don't wanna rehash what, what we just did on, on, on the other resolution. But this is budget season, we're in our budget cycle. What we're doing here is 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 really is is nothing new, so um, uh, want to uh, move to the furthest for for one meeting a track with the budget. All right. So this is a motion to defer to track with the budget to move to uh, June the 18th. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Opposed? No. You adopt. It is deferred to June the 18th. All right, next resolution of RS 2019-1743 by Council Members Bedney, O'Connell, and others. 
approves the intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for I-440 traffic operational deployment of blue toad spectra power over Ethernet data collection devices. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. I need to move the amendments. Okay, let's get some committee reports first. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized for Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Public Works Committee uh, considered the amendment, approved that, but then recommended uh, one meeting deferral, eight in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you. All right, traffic and parking, Council Member Hager, you're recognized. This on uh, 1743? 1743. Uh, moved to defer at one meeting, three, four, zero against. All right, thank you. Back to you, Council Member Bedney. So I'm going to uh, move uh, the amendments and then I'd like to speak later. All right, so uh, Council Member Bedney moves the amendment to 1743, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Oh, the amendments were just some missing information that uh, it had been brought up to our attention and we were able to put it back in. So now it's on the record, uh, the right. information that was missing. All right, so uh, there's a motion on the amendment, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. You're back on your resolution as amended. Council Member Bedney. Yeah, um, so we are, uh, I'm going to ask by the committee uh, to defer one meeting with a short explanation. All right, so uh, the motion is to defer one meeting to June the 18th. Um, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Bedney. Uh, some of us have concerns about issues of privacy that uh, could be violated with uh, the use of this uh, technology. Uh, we don't really, f I don't feel comfortable uh, with uh, the government having data, potentially data about how Nashville residents move around our highways. Uh, I think that uh, privacy should be of the utmost uh, importance. And uh, when we ask the public works people on the committee to give us guarantees about privacy, uh, he told us that uh, that wasn't his uh, expertise. So we asked them to come back with assurances. Uh, I think it is uh, concerning uh, that in an effort to uh, deal with traffic issues uh, that uh, the government may potentially know how we are uh, moving around the city, where we are at any given time, uh, where we go from where to where. I think it's uh, something that having grown up on a dictatorship uh, worries me greatly. I think this country should be about freedom and privacy and not about the government having too much uh, knowledge on what happens. So with that, I'm uh, going to ask for a one meeting deferral, and hopefully we'll get the answers we need for next meeting. All right, thank you, Councilman Bedney. The, w the reason I'm clarifying when we say one meeting, we have a specially called meeting next week. Oh, no, no. So Before. we're moving it to June the 18th. So yes, because, uh, uh, sorry, and it's also, it also needs to come back to the committee. So okay, part all of right. Work committee. So the motion is gonna be um, to move um, to June the 18th, to the June 18th meeting, and um, re refer it back to, um, Public Works. Public Works. Do you want to re-refer back to traffic and parking? Uh, I don't mind, but I think just getting, yes, yeah, sure. Okay, so re-refer them back to both of those committees. All right, that's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. It is, um, we heard on June the 18th, and it's re-referred back to both Public Works and to traffic and parking. All right, our next bill on the resolutions is uh, RS 2019-1771 by Vircher and Withers. Uh, adopts a new pay, pay plan for the general employees of the Metropolitan Government effective July 1st, 2019, excluding employees of the Board of Health, Board of Education, and the Police and Fire Department. Council Member Vircher, you're recognized. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Um, I need to get committee reports, please. All right, I'm gonna go to personnel, Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Personnel met this afternoon and we did consider resolution RS 2019 1771. Um, what we understood to be at the request of the sponsor, we uh, voted to defer to track with the budget, four in favor, uh, zero against. We did uh, request that uh, all of these 
uh, include, uh, come back before personnel with uh, any further information that we requested from Human Resources. All right, thank you, Council Member Withers. Back to you, Council Member Virtue. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended a deferral, uh, 1440 against, to track with the budget. And I'd like to uh, move for a deferral to track with the budget with a re-referral back to Budget and Finance and Personnel, Public Information and Human Relations. Okay, so it's going to be deferred to June the 18th and a re-referral back to Budget and Personnel. Um, that's the motion. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. RS 2019-1772, by virtue and Withers, adopts a new pay plan for employees of the Metropolitan Board of Health, effective July 1st, 2019. Councilmember Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Need committee reports, please. All right, Health and Hospitals, Councilmember Gilmore, you're recognized. We're on uh, 1772. Yes, thank you. Uh, health and Hospitals and Social Services, move to defer to track with the budget. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Gilmore. Personnel, Councilmember Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Personnel met and considered uh, 1772, just as with the other one, we uh, recommended deferral with a re-referral back to Personnel Committee, uh, and our vote was four in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Councilmember Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you so much. Budget and Finance recommended a deferral to track with the budget, 14-4-0 against, and I move for a deferral, Vice Mayor, with re-referral back to all committees. Okay, the deferral will be to June the 18th, re-referral back to all the committees. Uh, that's the motion, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Um, it is, uh, the motion is adopted. RS 2019-1773 by Virtue and Withers adopts a new pay plan for employees of the Metropolitan Departments of Police and Fire, effective July 1st, 2019. Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right. Uh, Council Member Roberts, Public Safety. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public Safety voted four in favor, zero against. All right. Uh, four um, in favor. Yes, in favor. All right, thank you. All right, uh, personnel, Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Personnel uh, met and considered 1773 this afternoon. We uh, recommended deferral to, uh, to track with the budget with re referral to all committee. Four in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended a deferral to track with the budget, 14 4 0 against. I move for a deferral with re referral back to all committees. All right, so uh, the motion is to defer to June the 18th. Re referring back to all the committees. That's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that motion is adopted. All right. I believe that completes all the resolutions. Um, we're now on bills on first reading. If there's no objection, uh, we'll consider all ordinances on first reading and one vote. Um, Um, so we have um, two bills on first reading that may need to be pulled, BL 2019-1697 by Council Member Vercher because there's a substitute, and BL 2019-1698 by Council Member Porterfield also because there's a substitute. So we're going to pull those two, but we'll take all the other bills up on first reading um, in one motion. Can I get a motion to adopt um, everything except 1697 and 1698? Got a motion properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, those bills are adopted on first reading. Okay, so we're now going to go to BL 2019-1697 uh, by Council Member Vercher. If you've got a regular calendar, it is um, on page 16. Of course, mine's not as regular as yours, so uh, I'm on page 19. All right, Council Member Vercher, BL 2019-1697, you're recognized. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. I need to move the substitute. Okay, so uh, I've got a motion to get the, um, to move the substitute, properly seconded back to you for the explanation of the substitute. I will go to Mr. Jameson. Um, he can briefly explain the, right. the substitute. Mr. Jameson, you're recognized. Just briefly, this would apply a corridor design overlay and the bill was originally submitted inadvertently uh, added some parcels that should not have been included and the substitute simply deletes those parcels. All right, back to you, Council Member Vercher. I'm going to move the substitute. Okay, I got a motion to move the substitute. Properly seconded. All those in favor of the substitute say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the substitute is adopted. Uh, you're now on your substitute uh, on first reading. 
I wanna go ahead and move it. All right, so I got a motion to approve on first reading the substitute, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt uh, BL 2019 1697 as substituted, passed on first reading. And then we're on BL 2019 1698 by Council Members Porterfield and Bedney. Uh, Council Member Porterfield, you are recognized. <coughs> I would like to move the substitute. All right, so there's a motion on the substitute, properly seconded. Uh, Mr. Jameson, explanation on that? Uh, identical to 1697, this applies a corridor uh, design overlay, inadvertently included some parcels that need to be taken out, and that's all the substitute does. All right, so I got a motion uh, to approve the substitute. It's been properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's adopted. Council Member Porterfield, you're on your bill on first, as substituted on first reading. I would like to move the substitute. Well, you're gonna move it on first reading. I would like to substitute. move it on first reading. All right, so I got a motion to approve the substitute on first reading. Properly seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed no, you adopt, thank you. <coughs> uh, Council Member Kendall, I'm coming to you. You're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This is a uh, motion, a request, the suspension of the rules to place uh, Bill 2019-1651 uh, to the, place it on the June 18th uh, meeting, a second reading. Uh, and I'm gonna ask Mr. Jamison to, to tell us why I'm doing that. <laughs> Mr. Jamison, you're recognized. Uh, this is originally a rezoning bill to rezone parcels from RS5 to RM20 on Torbett Street. There's a requested uh, substitute uh, that will be applying an SP, and because we don't have uh, a June public hearing, uh, we would need to schedule this for the July 2nd public hearing, and in order to have that substitute introduced, we'll need to do so on June 18th. So it's simply announcing that this will take place on uh, June 18th and be reinstated on that onto that agenda. And base, basically the reason for the uh, uh, substitute is to, it, it was originally for an RM20, and we're uh, converting that to a SP to eliminate the uh, short term rental. All right, <clears throat> so this is just a request to suspend the rules. Council Member Lee, I'm gonna go to you. Yes, sir, the committee <coughs> agreed to this. <coughs> Thank you. All right. Um, so um, you've heard Council Member Kendall is uh, request to suspend the rules to get this matter before us on June the 18th. Is there an objection to, this, uh, to the suspension of the rules? Seeing none, Council Member Kendall, I believe that will take care of it. Right. It'll be put on the June 18th meeting. All right, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, we are now on bills on second reading. Um, first bill up is Bill 2018-1363 by Council Member Hueso and Glover. Uh, changes 5.15 acres from RS10 to SP zoning for properties located at 940, 944 Curry Road and Curry Road unnumbered northwest of Vincent Drive to permit 24 multifamily residential units. Council Member Hueso, uh, Council Member Glover, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Mr. Jameson, I'm gonna ask you a question, so I'm gonna break as opposed to asking for committee report very quickly. I already know in the committee it's it's deferred by rule. So will, does that automatically re-refer it back to the committee, uh, to, to the planning? Uh, okay, it will, all right. So committee reports, please. All right, Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. Council Member Glover is right. The committee recommended a one meeting deferral. All right. 11 four, zero against. All right, Council Member Glover. Thank you, and, and we, we agree. Uh, there was a mix up on communication between the two of us, and so therefore we think the, it, it's appropriate to do the one meeting deferral where we can take care and clean up a couple of things there. So yes, thank you, and uh, we, we move for the one meeting deferral. All right, so um, it sounds like it was deferred by rule. Yeah, that's why uh, I was asking if I needed to. It then. Well, so um, we just have to be careful because of this special meeting. So it's going to be set on June the 18th. Yes. All okay. Right. Yes. <clears throat> yes. All right. Thank Deferred you. by rule to June the 18th. All right. All right. Bill 2018-1416 by Council Member Henderson, Anthony Davis, and others. Amends the Metro Code regarding tree density, removal, and replacement requirements. Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I would like to move a substitute, please. All right, so I got a motion to uh, move the substitute. 
Properly seconded, back to you for an explanation of the substitute. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues, uh, Councilman Davis and Councilman Sledge and uh, the other co-sponsors that have uh, joined with us on this bill. Um, uh, Ms. Sean Shepard at the, at the planning department and uh, Director Kemp. Uh, we have had several uh, stakeholder meetings, uh, both with the development community uh, and with uh, neighbors and advocates uh, for uh, tree-related issues. And so this is a bill uh, so that uh, prior to this uh, being before the Planning Commission, we can update the bill to reflect uh, the conversations and the stakeholder work that we've uh, been doing uh, increasingly to improve this bill. Uh, so this just gets us caught up with all our uh, stakeholder feedback so that when it is before the Planning Commission, uh, that everything is in order. And with that, I would renew my no motion uh, to substitute the bill, please. All right, so we've got a motion to approve the substitute. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt, you're on your bill as substituted. Council Member Henderson. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I, at this time, I would like to, and Mr. Jameson, help me here, but we want to uh, defer uh, back uh, to a public hearing uh, in July, as that will be subsequent to the Planning Commission meeting. You could just move the bill as substituted. It'll then be appearing on the July 2nd Council meeting. Thank you. I would like to move the bill as substituted, please. Okay. So um, there's a motion to move the bill as substituted, properly seconded. Any discussion? We're on Bill 2018-14-16. Uh, Seeing no discussion, all in favor say aye. aye. Those no. You adopt uh, on second reading. All right. Uh, substitute Bill 20, BL 2019. Uh, I'm sorry, we adopted the substitute on second reading. Substitute bill, uh, bill 2019-15-18 by Council Member O'Connell amends the Metro Code regarding booting services. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move to defer this indefinitely. All right, so I got a motion. Um, motion to defer indefinitely, properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the bill is deferred indefinitely. Bill 2019-1524 by Council Member Vircher and Hall um, amends the Metro Code regarding definitions of qualified company and qualified project and eligibility for economic and com com uh, community development incentive grants. Com Council Member Vircher, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Um, Budget and Finance recommended a two-meeting two deferral, 1440 against, and I move for a two-meeting deferral with a re-referral back to Budget and Finance. All right, so the motion is a two-meeting deferral, which will take it to the first meeting in July? Correct. All right, and a re-referral back to Budget and Finance, properly seconded. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion is adopted. All right, um, BL 2019-1543 by Council Member O'Connell, amends the Metro Code to prohibit panhandling in certain locations. Council Member O'Connell, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right, Public Safety, Council Member Roberts, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The committee approved four in favor, zero against, as amended. All right, thank you. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I think we had, uh, a little bit of confusion about how this was to proceed in public safety. I, I think there was confusion about the existence of a letter that I, I don't think actually existed. I'd like to uh, move this to track with the other one to the second meeting in July. Okay, so there's a motion to defer to the second meeting in July. We're on 1543, properly seconded. Uh, discussion, Council Member Glover, you recognized. So, Mr. Jamison, I'm sorry to keep calling on you, but I want to make sure that I'm, that I'm understanding this correctly. Uh, I, we did move one of the amendments that passed, as, as was just given in the report, but I didn't hear us move the amendment tonight uh, to go ahead and, and have that adopted with this prior to the deferral. So uh, That's an option, or you could wait until it comes back on July 2nd to move the amendments. Okay. Well, uh, I would like to go ahead and move the amendment, and I'll agree to the deferral, but I would like this built into the, the bill as a whole because, because of the area that it, that it discusses. All right, so um, 
Council member, it's your amendment, so you're going to move the amendment? Yes, I'm moving the amendment. Okay, so I've got a motion to amend. Uh, we're on 1543, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the amendment. What it basically does is just expands the territory for basically all the city. Is that a pretty simple explanation, Mr. Jameson? Mr. Jameson. So the, this is uh, an amendment to the uh, panhandling bill, and the panhandling bill currently prohibits those activities within certain specified locations at bus stops, sidewalk cafes, within a certain amount of uh, feet uh, of ATMs or banks, uh, entrances to public buildings. Uh, the ordinance would add, uh, as originally drafted, certain geographic locations, uh, certain locations on Commerce Street, Second Avenue, uh, Symphony Place. The uh, amendment offered by Councilman Glover would also add um, any vehicle that is operating on a public street so that uh, vendors, for example, that are operating at intersections that approach your vehicle would be included within this um, uh, this amended ordinance. Well, now, that's not, the, let me make sure, not vendors, this is just panhandling. Correct, panhandlers. Okay, sorry. I just want to make sure we, we're, we're clear on that. So that that's what it does. Thank you. All right, so uh, Council Member Glover has moved his amendment. It's been properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Dow, you're recognized. Um. I think I read what I needed to read on this. I just had some questions about like the legality of this, like being able to prohibit panhandling on certain streets. Like how is that legal? So, and I, I haven't heard an explanation for that because I think we all have challenges with people panhandling and soliciting in our business districts. And I don't, I want to find out um, how is it that we can designate these specific areas as to no panhandling? Well, you're, you're spot on, Council Lady Dow, and I think Councilman O'Connell is sensitive to um, the emerging uh, appellate court decisions that are coming out since 2015 that are looking at panhandling restrictions and aggressive panhandling restrictions as potentially content-based, which uh, raises significantly the bar that cities have in justifying them. You may have noted that on the following page of your agenda, Councilman O'Connell has another bill that would eliminate this portion of aggressive panhandling code. I believe he's going to take the deferral time to decide and, and perhaps meet with stakeholders and determine what route is possible uh, under the current appellate terrain. But it is very difficult under Reed versus Gilbert and the cases that have followed since then to, uh, to defend these constitutionally for city ordinances. Okay, I appreciate that. I just did not want to see us get in any type of uh, legal issue, and I would love to work with Councilman O'Connell on coming up with some type of a resolution, as we do know that this is an issue in our city. So thank you. All right, um, Council Member Elrod, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. As has been alluded, this is a, a, a panhandling is an issue, I think, throughout the city. But I, what is the definition under the Metro Code of what, what is technically panhandling that we would be prohibiting? So panhandling, and is, it, it distinguishes panhandling and aggressive panhandling. The latter is any instance which intimidates uh, the, the individual, uh, blocks their passage, um, approaches them um, in certain locations, uh, for example, outside of an ATM uh, and other sensitive locations. Uh, panhandling, otherwise just uh, not aggressive, but just straightforward panhandling, is any request or solicitation for money or other goods. Does panhandling include the solicitation of money in exchange for goods? I don't or a newspaper? Uh, no, there are special no. exceptions for First Amendment protections for newspaper restrictions, and those are all exempted from the panhandling provisions that we have in the code now. Right. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Um, wh what is the enforcement of this? How, how, what's going to happen with, uh, with people that... Um, Council Member O'Connell, for what reason? Uh, so, there's not... The intent was not actually to discuss this bill or the amendment tonight, and there was an issue in committee where I was not present, and I guess maybe I would ask Mr. Jameson, the committee discussed and recommended this without a sponsor present, and should we even be on the floor tonight, or should it be deferred by rule? I felt perhaps there was a letter on... Uh, there was not a letter. All right. Well, then, the, under Rule 19, then this should not have been introduced uh, or approved by the committee. Okay. That's Thank the you. All right. So, based upon that, um, 
that's our mistake. Okay. So um, okay, well, I, yeah, I'm not a part button. of the committee, but I, I introduced them. So I thought I was following the rules in there. All right. So, All right. so the you. bill is deferred <laughs> by rule. All right. So um, we will move on to BL 2019-1616 by Council Member Vircher and O'Connell. Uh, ordinance approving an agreement by and between the Metropolitan Government and, and Preston Hollow Capital LLC relating to the operation and modernization of the on-street metered parking program within the public rights of way of the metropolitan area and making necessary related amendments to various provisions of Titles 1, 2, 12, and 13 of the Metropolitan Code to facilitate the operation and modernization of the on-street metered parking program. Council Member Vircher, you're recognized on BL 2019-1616. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Committee reports. All right, planning. Um, Councilmember Bedney. The planning committee uh, voted uh, to support a motion to withdraw 1140 against. All right. Uh, traffic and parking, Councilmember Hager. Traffic and parking on 2019 1616 voted to withdraw 340 against. All right. Thank you. Councilmember O'Connell, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Public Works voted 10 in favor, zero against to move to withdraw. All right, back to you, Council Member Vircher for budget. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Budget and finance recommended a definitely deferral, eight, four, two against, and I move for withdrawal. So you're moving for withdrawal, okay. So there's a motion to withdraw, properly second to discussion. Council Member O'Connell. I'd like to withdraw the bill. I'm the lead sponsor on it, what I'm looking at. So I've got a, I've got a motion to withdraw from the lead sponsor. So under I'm Robert's seconded. rules, if a sponsor withdraws, there is no debate, it's just withdrawn. If the sponsor moves to withdraw, then it calls for a, a vote. So if uh, sponsor Verser wishes to with, withdraw her motion and just allow the withdrawal, that would be one route. If you want to have a vote on the withdrawal, you would move to withdraw. Just want to withdraw it. Okay, then it's withdrawn. So the bill's, <laughs> so the bill's withdrawn. No okay. discussion. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Moving on, BL 2019-1625 by Council Member Vircher. Ordinance establishing the tax levy in the General Services District for the fiscal year 2019-2020, declaring the amount required for the annual, annual operating budget of the Urban Services District, pursuant to Section 6.07 of the Metropolitan Charter. Council Member Vircher, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. This is the tax levy. Budget and finance recommended approval with the re-referral back to budget and finance 1440 against. I move for approval with the re-referral back to budget and finance. All right, you've heard the motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Those no. Um, BL 2019-1625 is passed on second reading and re-referred back to budget and finance. BL 2019-1626 by Council Member Vircher and Hall. Ordinance establishing a program for the purpose of providing assistance to low-income elderly residents of the Metropolitan Government for fiscal year 2019-2020. Council Member Vircher, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and finance recommended approval with the re-referral back to budget and finance. 14-4-0 against. I move for approval with the re-referral back to budget and finance. All right, you've heard the motion. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion is adopted. Um, BL 2019-1627 by Council Members Vircher and Hall establishes a new fee structure for all short-term rental property permit applications and amends the Metro Code relative to short-term rental property permit application fees. Council Member Vircher, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Committee reports. All right. I've got Codes Fair and Farmers Market. Council Member Swope, you're recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Codes Fair's Farmers Market approved the substitute 540 against and move to approve as substituted, substituted 441 against. All right, thank you. Um, Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. Uh, the Planning Committee uh, recommended approval of the substitute and the legislation as substituted 1140 against. All right, back to you, Council Member Vircher. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance approved the substitute 1440 against and approved the bill as substituted. 14 4, 0 against. I would like to move the substitute, and if Mr. Jameson can explain the substitute. Okay, I got a motion on the substitute, properly seconded to you, Mr. Jameson. Uh, the bill does two things. It raises the STRP fee from $50 to $313, and then it takes the opportunity to update some references to those fee amounts in Title 17. 
with no public hearing in June, if we delete the references to Title 17, this council could go ahead and approve this fee increase so that it's available for uh, the budget ordinance, uh, whichever version will be passed by this council later this month. Thank All you, right. Mr. Jameson. Council Member Vercher, you renew your motion. I do, I'm okay, sorry, so Vice Mayor. <laughs> so you're moving the substitute, it's been properly seconded. I'm going to Council Member Roberts. I'd like to be noted as abstaining, please. Okay, so Council Member Roberts will be uh, noted as abstaining. You got that, Madam Clerk? Council Member Roberts is gonna abstain, okay. All right, so we are now um, on a motion to approve the substitute. Uh, we're on BL 2019-1627, uh, that's been seconded. Uh, we're on the substitute, or we're voting on the substitute. All in favor of the substitute say aye. aye. Opposed no, substitute is adopted. Back to you, Council Member Vercher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move it as substituted. Okay, uh, so we're again on 1627 as substituted. Uh, the motion is to approve on second reading. Um, it's been properly seconded. Uh, nobody in the queue, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed no, you adopt. Okay, so where you are on the board, um, because uh, we're on second reading. Sounds like there's a no vote. Madam Clerk, uh, we are voting on BL 2019-1627. So Madam Clerk, if you will open up the machines um, so we can vote on BL 2019-1627 as substituted. Council Member Roberts is, uh, should be noted as abstaining. Everybody voted? All right, uh, Madam Clerk, if you will um, close the machines, take the vote. 26 in favor, one against, three abstentions. All right, thank you. So um, uh, BL 2019 1627 as substituted is approved on second reading. All right, BL 2019 1630 by Council Members Mendes, Cooper, and others uh, amends the Metro Code pertaining to the requirements for tax increment financing plans. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Now you recognize. Committee report, please. All right, uh, Budget and Finance, Council Member Vercher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. At the request of the sponsor, uh, Budget and Finance recommended um, a two meeting deferral, 1440 against. All right, back to you, Council Member Mendez. In order to get this to track with other tax increment financing reform bills, I would move to defer this to the first meeting of July. Okay, so this is gonna be moved to the first meeting in July. That's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion is adopted. BL 2019-1631 by Council Member O'Connell creates Title IX noise and amplified sound and consolidates existing provisions regulating noise, excessive noise, and construction noise. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to get committee reports. Uh, codes, fairs, and farmers market. Council Member Swope. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Due to no letter and no councilman in the meeting, we were forced to defer by rule. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to Convention Tourism. Councilmember Hart, you're recognized. Thank you, uh, Madam. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Vice Mayor. It's been a long day. The Convention Tourism <clears throat> and Public Entertainment Facilities voted for a bill 2019 1631, six in favor of a deferral. With, um, from the actual sponsor. All right, uh, Council Member O'Connell, it sounds like it got deferred by rule. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, there was a time sensitive matter that kept me from being able to appear at Codes Fair and Farmers Market, but the, uh, the deferral there actually proved helpful as we got some uh, good input from the Convention Tourism and Public, Inter Public Entertainment Facilities Committee. Uh, I would like to move to defer for one meeting with a brief explanation. It sounds like it was deferred by rule. So it's deferred by rule for one meeting, so okay, we just that's move it fine. On. Okay, it'll be up on June the Perfect. 18th. that works, All right. thank you. All right, uh, Bill 2019-1632, also by Council Member O'Connell, ordinance to amend section 11.12.090 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws related to aggressive panhandling by deleting the section in its entirety. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Council Member Roberts, Public Safety. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public Safety voted four in favor, zero against to defer to the second meeting in July per the sponsor. All right, Council Member O'Connell. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move to defer to the second meeting in July. Second meeting in July. That's the motion to defer, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion is adopted. BL 2019-1638, uh, by Council Member Vercher, approves an amended partnership agreement between the Office of the Mayor and the Cities for Financial Empowerment Fund, Inc., to support the centers. Council Member Vercher, you're recognized. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 14-4, zero against, and I move for approval. Okay, the motion is to approve on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019-1639 by Council Members Withers and Vercher. Creates a position of 311 call center specialist, 311 call center specialist, senior crime scene investigator three, and fire inspector two, field training officer. Council member Weathers, you're recognized on 1639. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor. The personnel committee met this afternoon and we considered Bill 2019 1639. And we recommended approval for in favor, zero against. All right. Uh, let me get uh, budget and finance. Council member Vercher. Thank you so much, report. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval and re-referral 14-4-0 again, so these can track with the pay plan resolution. All right, back to you, Council Member Withers. I would like to move for approval and re-referral back to both committees, if I could. All right, that's fine. That's the motion, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that motion is adopted. BL 2019-1640 by Council Member Withers, Vircher, and Gilmore. This creates the position of Bureau Director 2 for the Metropolitan Department of Health. Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Personnel Committee uh, met this afternoon and considered 2019-1640, and our committee recommended approval for in favor, zero against. All right, Council Member Vircher, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval with a re-referral back to Budget and Finance, 14-4-0 against. All right. Back to you, Council Member Withers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, with that, I would like to move uh, approval with a re-referral back to both committees on third. All right. That's the motion. Properly seconded. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt the motion. BL 2019-1641 by Council Member O'Connell and Hurt provides for the designation of public property within specified areas of downtown Nashville as a temporary special event zone during the time period beginning at 9 o'clock p.m. on July 2nd, 2019, ending at 11 o'clock p.m. on July 5th, 2019, relative to the use of these areas in conjunction with the 2019 July 4th celebration. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports. All right, Council Member Vercher, you're recognized for budget and finance. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 14-4-0 against. Council Member Hurt, Convention Tourism. Thank you, Mr. President. Conventions and um, Tourism voted six in favor and four against. All right, thank you. Parks Library, Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Unfortunately, Parks Library and Arts had to defer by rule. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move to suspend the rules to get this uh, heard tonight. All right, so uh, there is a motion to suspend the rules. Uh, is there an objection? Seeing none, you're on your bill. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, my apologies. That same timing issue caught me out at two committees that met basically back to back and I was unable to appear. The Parks Library and Arts um, got some good suggestions from that committee nonetheless uh, that we will be incorporating into these as we go forward. Uh, but generally these have been uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, as mentioned in budget and finance yesterday, uh, the focus has been on public safety. I think after uh, looking at the general success of the NFL draft as, a, as an event delivery for Nashville, uh, public safety was well in hand at that event, and I think these special event zones have worked very well, so I'd like to uh, move for approval. All right, so you've got a motion to approve, properly seconded, uh, Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just want to build on what Councilman O'Connell said just briefly uh, and ask our body to uh, think about next time, which Councilman O'Connell was alluding to. We have had a consistent problem wherein when we establish these special event zones, uh, downtown NFL drafts, CMA, so forth, where we have greenway closures. Um, and the greenway closures do not just happen on the day of the event. They happen uh, several days before, a day after. It kind of becomes almost a week of time uh, where we have our inaccessible 
greenways in the vicinity of the Ascend Amphitheater, most typically. And so uh, uh, Councilman O'Connell alluded to it. I know he cares about it very much and that we will, I think as a parks committee, continue to work on that. But I would like to see us put into the language of these special event zones a particular provision as it relates to uh, the, the greenways. So uh, that's something that has been of repeat community concern. And so uh, I would ask us, uh, and of course, uh, I support approving this at this time, but going forward that we make sure that that language is in there. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, back to you. Thank you, Mr. President. We'd like to thank uh, Council Member Henderson for her attentiveness to that. We, I've heard from many frustrated uh, stakeholders in and around these footprints, and sometimes the closures are actually occurring uh, days in advance of the, the actual scheduled closure. So we do have some issues to work through here um, at this point. Uh, though with this event drawing so close, I would like to renew my motion to approve. All right, so I got a mo or the motion is to pass on second reading. That's correct, sorry. Properly seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Those no, uh, you adopt on second reading. Bill 2019-1642, Virtual Sledge and others, approves a participation agreement between Department of Water and Sewer Services and Stratos Development Group, LLC, to provide public water service improvements for the proposed development as well as other existing properties in the area. Council Member Virtual, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. Yes, the committee recommended approval. Nine four zero against. All right, thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. Public Works. Uh, we recommended sixteen forty two. Yeah, uh, ten in favor, zero against. Thank All right. you. Back to you, Councilmember Vercher. Budget and Finance recommended approval fourteen four zero against. I move for approval. Okay, I got a motion to approve on second reading properly. Seconded. Any discussion on sixteen forty two? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Opposed no. You adopt. Uh, Bill 2019 1643 by Council Member Hall uh, requires all existing culverts, inlets, storm drains, and dishes within the T2 rural neighborhood policy and T3 suburban neighborhood policy to be upgraded, retrofitted, and or constructed to current stormwater maintenance manual standards by January 1st, 2025. Council Member Hall, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. All right, Council Member Vercher, Budget and Finance. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval of the substitute 1440 against, and for uh, at the request of a, at the request of the sponsor, a two meeting deferral 1440 against. All right. Thank you, Public Works Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. We recommended uh, deferral for two meetings. Ten in favor, zero against. All right, uh, Council Member Hall. Um, as discussed in both uh, committee meetings, I'd like to uh, defer this two meetings as amended. Do uh, you want to put the substitute on tonight? Yes, please. Let's move the substitute. Okay, so there's a motion to approve the substitute properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation. I can go to Mr. Jameson. Mr. Jameson? Mr. Jameson. It's right just now. a typographical error on my part and stored it instead of the stormwater uh, maintenance manual. It should have been the stormwater management manual. My apologies to the sponsor. I, I did that on purpose to make sure he made sure he recognized his mistake. All right, so uh, there's a motion on the substitute. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You're on the substitute. Back to you now for a motion. Uh, again, I'd like to defer two meetings, please. All right. So the motion is to defer two meetings, which would take you to the first meeting in July. Uh, that's the motion. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion to defer is adopted. Uh, BL 2019-1644 by Council Members Mendez, Cooper, and others. Uh, this amends Ordinance BL 2018-1315 pertaining to the Tax Increment Financing Study and Formulating Committee. Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. All right, Budget and Finance. Council Member Vercher. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval for the amendment 14-4-0 against and recommended approval as amended 14-4-0 against. All right, back to you, Council Member Mendez. Move the amendment with a brief explanation. All right. So the motion uh, is to um, move the amendment uh, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Just want to thank Councilman uh, Syracuse for making the suggestion on this. It clarifies which agency will be responsible for, primarily responsible for giving us reports back on the tax increment financing committee's recommendations. Um, and so thanks for that. 
All right, so the motion is to approve the amendment, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Okay, we're voting on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the amendment passes. You're back on your bill as amended. Move the bill as amended. Okay, uh, the bill, uh, that we're on 1644 now as amended. This is to approve on second reading. Uh, the motion, that's what the motion is, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the bill, 1644, as amended, is passed on second reading. BL 2019-1646 by Council Member Pulley, O'Connell, and Bedney, authorizes Metro to abandon existing easement rights. Located at 2003 B. Castleman Drive, formerly known as Burtonwood Drive. Council Member Pulley, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Planning and zoning, Council Member Bedney. We're on 1646. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had Luke here, and I didn't thought that I had one, but I do, so I apologize. That's okay. The committee recommended approval 940 against. Thank you. Council Member O'Connell, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. We voted uh, 10 in favor, 0 against. All right. Back to you, Council Member Pulley. Move approval. Motion is to approve on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion is adopted. BL 2019-1647 by Council Member O'Connell and Bedney authorizes Metro Government to abandon existing easement rights and 111 linear feet of existing three-inch water main located at 65 Lindsley Avenue, formerly known as Berrien Street. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Really excited to be the lead sponsor on this one. Like to request committee reports. All right, Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. I think it was a typo. I was the leading sponsor. Yep. The committee recommended approval 940 against. All right, back to you, Council Member O'Connell. By contrast, Public Works recommended in favor, 10 in favor, 0 against. And you want a motion to approve? I would love a motion to approve. And there's a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion is adopted. 2019-1648, uh, here you go. Council Member Bedney, you got this one. Bedney O'Connell authorizes the Metro Government to accept new sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and fire hydrant assemblies for property located at Middle Wick Lane Unnumbered, also known as Burkett Village Phase 6, Phase six Section 1. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Um, yes. Uh, I need committee reports. Please. All right. I'm going to Public Works. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Like uh, to give that report, we voted 10 in favor, 0 against to uh, approve. Back to you, Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Committee was uh, uh, in support of it, 9 4 0 against. All right. And do you want a motion to approve? I want to move to approve this uh, legislation that is uh, very important for the future of the fire station. Uh, that is going to be coming on that street. So I appreciate your support. All right. So I got a motion to approve 1648. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt 1648 on second reading. Bill 2019 1649, uh, Council Member Bedney and O'Connell authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and fire hydrant assemblies for property located at Middlewick Lane, unnumbered, also known as Burkett Village, Phase 6, Section 2. Council Member Bedney, we're on Section 2 of this. Um, you're recognized. Yes. Uh, committee report, please. All right. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. Just for clarity, that's Section 2 only of Phase 6. Uh, that's right. I'd like to uh, report that the Public Works Committee voted 10 in favor, 0 against, to recommend approval. All right. Councilmember Bedney, back to you, Planning and Zoning. Uh, planning, and zoning uh, planning and Zoning recommend approval, 940 against. We remind reminder that being second doesn't mean there is any worse. It's, uh, it's as good as number one. And with that, I move to approval. All right. So I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? We're on 1649. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. Bill 2019 1650 by Council Member Roten, O'Connell, and Bedney. Authorized to the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public water main and public sanitary sewer mains, a sanitary sewer manhole and easements, and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, a fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 3177 Lebanon Pike. Councilmember Roten, you're recognized. Easy for you to say, Mr. Vice Mayor. That's right. Committee reports, please. Uh, planning and zoning, Councilmember Bedney. 
The committee recommended approval, 9-4-0 against. Public Works, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. We agreed to award Council Member Roten a participation badge and uh, recommended 10 in favor, zero against. I'm glad you allowed that. Council Member Roten, you're recognized. Looking forward to my badge. All right. Um, and I move approval. Thank got you. a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019-1653 by Council Member Blaylock. Uh, requires a flag of the Metropolitan Government be presented to the family of a former member of the Metropolitan County Council upon the member's death. Council Member Blaylock, you're recognized. Thank you. Committee reports, please. Uh, rules confirmation. Council Member Lee, you're recognized. Oh, Council Member Haywood, have you got this? Not here. Oh, <laughs> Council Member Murphy, do you want to handle rules? I would thoroughly enjoy handling rules. We're on 1653. We have moved to defer one meeting, seven in favor, zero against. All right, Council Member Blaylock, you're recognized. Thank you, I move to defer one meeting and just we're gonna add all elected officials to the bill. Okay, so um, there's a motion to defer one meeting to June the 18th. Um, properly seconded, any discussion on the deferral? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion to defer to June 18th is um, passed. All right, we are now on bills on third reading. Uh, the first bill up is BL 2019-1537 by Council Member Scott Davis. Uh, this is a disapproved bill by the Planning Commission 7 to 0 on January 10th, 2019. It changes 0.18 acres from RS5 to R6 zoning for property located at 327 Gatewood Avenue. Council Member Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right, Planning and Zoning, Council Member Bedney. At the request of the Councilman, the committee recommended a deferral to the June 18th meeting, 1140 against. Okay, um, back to you, Council Member Scott Davis. Um, Move for the deferral, please, sir. Okay, so the motion is to defer this matter to uh, June the 18th, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion to defer to June 18th passes. Now we're on BL 2019-1598, sponsors O'Connell, Roberts, and others. This amends the Metro Code to establish a fleet schedule for low or zero emission vehicles owned by the Metro government. Councilmember O'Connell. Councilmember O'Connell, BL 2019-1599. Thank you, I'm so sorry. There was a, a disruptive transition Team here at the podium. Thank right. you, Madam President. Sorry to disrupt things. Uh, no, this is, uh, I'm really excited to actually have the opportunity to rise in support of this. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. All right. Is the floor mine? floor is yours. Oh, great. Um, everybody should have on their desks a copy of a letter from the American Lung Association in support of the, both this bill and the next one is uh, pleased to get j notice of that support just today. Uh, we had a lot of good discussion on this last time, uh, and I would like to move approval. Seeing no one in the queue, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019-1599, sponsors O'Connell, Roberts, and others. This amends the Metro Code to create green building standard buildings owned by Metro government and amends the sustainable building design standards for new and renovated buildings and facilities. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. On this one, again, uh, there was kind of some late breaking developments. I know the Department of General Services last week at the request of some members, or sorry, last meeting, shortly thereafter, uh, provided some additional information uh, supplementary to the fiscal note, this one as well. I, I, the council office distributed to member the attention of members today. Uh, sorry, I guess I'd like to move approval of the brief explanation. There's that. Okay, thank um, you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and just to continue that you have in your inboxes the piece that was not a part of the fiscal note, which includes the actual uh, cost savings over that horizon, which rise into the uh, millions of dollars as well alongside this, again, highlighting the efficiency. Uh, with that explanation, I'd like to renew my motion to approve. Thank you. Seeing no one in the queue, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill's recommended. 
Next is Bill 2019-1600, sponsors O'Connell, Roberts, and others. This amends the Metro Code to establish a renewable energy standard for the Metro government. Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Again, I'd like to move approval of brief explanation. Is there a second? It's been seconded. Councilmember? Just like to express again the gratitude on all three of these pieces of legislation. This really was a package, although there were independent considerations here. Great departmental support, particularly from General Services and NES. Uh, strong conversations and ideas uh, coming from the administration as well. Uh, and certainly uh, great co-sponsor support and, and really good conversation through all the committees that it came through. I think this is important policy and it's great to see us be able to deliver something like this uh, this close to the end of the term. So thanks to everyone for your support on these and your patience as we work through some of the issues and made these better bills. Uh, and with that, I'd like to renew my motion to approve. Thank you. We have one member in the queue, Council Member Elrod. This need to be reported as abstaining, abstaining, please. Abstaining. Madam Clerk, you have that? Okay. Do we need to go on the board? Technically, we need to go to the board. Madam Clerk, can you open the, I thought I'd said that. <laughs> okay. Has everyone voted? Has everyone voted? Councilmember Bednay? Uh, it looks like he did vote. He did vote, okay. All right, close the, close the machines. Okay. 28 in favor, one abstention. 28 in favor, one abstention. Thank you, congratulations. Bill's recommended. Councilmember O'Connell, thank you for your leadership on that. Next is BL 2019-1612, sponsors Bednay Henderson Hall. This amends the Metro Code regarding contracts for supplies and services in excess of 60 months. Councilmember Bednay. Uh, yes, uh, do I, are there any committee reports? They're all in. They're all in. So I wanna thank Council Lady uh, Henderson to co-sponsor this legislation and I'm uh, Excited to ask for uh, your approval on this. Is that a motion? Yeah, I, I make a motion. I was just trying to be very. <laughs> I'm trying to be official. But I'm, I'm, okay, I'm is moved there to approve. Second? Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? Yeah. Any others? All right. Any opposed? Bill Come is on. recommended. That was Come pretty on, guys. Say aye. Voting. Oh. Next is BL 2019. 1613, sponsors Mendez, Van Rees, and others. This amends the Metro Code pertaining to annual reports from tax increment agencies. Council Member Mendez. Oh, okay. all, all committee reports are in, move approval. It's been moved and seconded, seeing no one in the queue. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill is, you approve. Next is BL 2019-1617, sponsors O'Connell and Bedney. This authorizes the Metro government to accept new sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and to relocate one fire hydrant assembly for properties located at 838B and 843B Gough Street. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval. It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no one in the queue, all those in favor? Any opposed? You recommend. Next is BL 2019-1618, sponsors O'Connell and Bedney. This authorizes Millennium Music Row LLC to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 70 Music Square West. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no one in the queue. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? You adopt. Next is BL 2019-1619, sponsors O'Connell and Bedney. This authorizes Nashville Prop Co. LLC to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 306 Gay Street. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval. It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no one in the queue, all those in favor? Any opposed? You adopt. Next is BL 2019-1620, sponsors O'Connell and Bedney. 
This authorizes Metro government to abandon existing easement rights for property located at Dr. Walter S. Davis Boulevard, formerly known as Clifton Avenue. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no one in the queue, all those in favor? Any opposed? You adopt. Next is BL 2019-1621, sponsors O'Connell and Bedney. This abandons alley number 126 right of way. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval. It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no one in the queue, all those in favor? Any opposed? You adopt. Next is BL 2019-1622, sponsors O'Connell and Bedney. This abandons a portion of Maynard Avenue right-of-way. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to yield my time to Council Member Bedney. No, I'd, I knew actually, I'd like it. to move approval. <laughs> Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no one in the queue, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. And now I'd like to call on Council Member Antoinette Lee to adjourn the I would like to move that we adjourn until Tuesday, June the 11th at six o'clock. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Do we need to vote on that? All in favor? Any opposed? We will see you next Tuesday. We are adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.